and right now I just wanted to give you an update on things. We may hang here for a little bit just to give warning to the control booth back there, but we have a very intense thunderstorm that is ongoing right now. There have been reports of substantial damage around Tama, around Tama County, and the National Weather Service is saying winds are possibly near 100 miles an hour or higher. There's emergency managers in that area saying winds we're likely 100 miles an hour. They're saying uh, Tama County, Tama and Toledo has substantial damage across both communities. Power lines, trees, roofs, winds, an excess of 80 miles an hour. Winds still continuing to blow, raining hard. Incredibly intense thunderstorms ongoing here. There is a severe thunderstorm warning for Tama County that is for 90 mile an hour winds. So this is not something that we see every day. It's incredibly intense. And we have a state center around Highway 30, significant damage there. Numerous cars blown off Highway 30 and flipped. Uh, we have still portions of the rest of the area here as this goes towards Benton County, Iowa County, Keokuk County, right here on the edge that are going to be dealing with these incredibly intense winds as the storm moves at about 70 miles an hour. So now this is starting to move out of Tama County, still likely some strong winds. And just to show you some of the numbers here, I mean, you just look at this. These are incredibly bright velocity. So just to show you the wind, 73 miles an hour, 61, 77. That's just inside of the thunderstorm there. 91 miles an hour showing up in some spots. 66. I mean, we have just incredibly, incredibly intense thunderstorms ongoing at the moment that could be producing winds up to 100 miles an hour or greater. Meteorologist Nick Stewart is out in the road warrior right now and uh, in this area. And Nick, I don't know if you've seen other reports floating around on social media, but we have had uh, just uh, numerous reports of power outages, trees down, and now you're out there watching the storms now. Yeah, I, I really believe it. Uh, right now, we're right on the leading edge of the storm. We are just north of Bell Plain by Van Horn, racing back east on 30. I don't know how well you can see it, but the corn in the foreground is almost being knocked completely to the ground. Very intense winds now racing down Highway 30. There's a lot of leaves flying through the air, a lot of damage. Look at all the leaves and debris flying through the air right now. The core of those winds, upwards of 100 miles per hour, probably about a mile or two behind us. So we're trying to stay out ahead of the storm, but I know at some point we're going to get uh, uh, munched on this thing. Thankfully, we're in a safe spot in terms of the vehicle. We're making sure we're staying away from power lines and trees, uh, but there's an immense a lot of debris, agricultural debris flying through the air, corn stalks. We saw big leaves of corn stalks. Look at these trees here. The corn is flowing uh, down as well. So really intense winds racing right now down Highway 30. I would venture guess we are probably about a mile or so ahead of the really intense winds, which the National Weather Service now says could be upwards of 100 miles per hour um, along what we call that bookend, uh, which is just on uh, 30 right now. It looks like there's a pretty good indication of very intense winds just northwest of Belle Plaine, west of Belle Plaine, uh, Keystone area right now. And this is coming right towards Cedar Rapids. So Cedar Rapids, we've been telling you, you need to take these storms very, very seriously. Uh, these storms will pack quite the punch. Again, we're talking wind gust upwards of 100 miles per hour, and we're already seeing indications of that on the very leading edge, Rebecca. Yeah, and Nick, we've gotten reports now in Marshall County of a 106 mile an hour wind gust. Now we have uh, this warning now, Sarah, for Lynn County for Cedar Rapids is for 90 mile an hour winds. This is for 90 mile an hour winds. So folks, we're staying here. We have a very, very intense thunderstorm. This is I'm treating this as if this is a tornado warning because you're going to have damage that's even more widespread than this. We've had this happen before that uh, we have seen intense damage and intense crop damage. You're likely hearing the sirens go off because we have incredibly strong winds. We have had confirmation of nearly 100 mile an hour or greater wind gusts twice now. So we have um, storm in Tama County, 60 to 80 mile an hour winds, buildings losing roofing materials and tree damage. Responders are going out. That's from the emergency manager there. Lagrand in Marshall County, 106 mile an hour winds. 
We have Chelsea and Tama County, 90 mile an hour winds, damaged building at their public health office. Um, the, uh, the National Weather Service is continuing to communicate, as Nick just said, 100 mile an hour winds or greater are possible with these thunderstorms. And it is that little bookend, Nick was talking about that word. Uh, there's just this little curl happening here. And this is moving through Belle Plaine, heading towards Newhall and heading toward the Cedar Rapids area, especially south side of Cedar Rapids. But really, this, in, this is an intense line here. It's going to come up Highway 100, Highway 30, I-80, Highway 6, down toward Marengo, Williamsburg, along I-80, toward Iowa City, Coralville, North Liberty, uh, everyone in between Cedar Rapids to Iowa City. And this is an incredibly intense thunderstorm that is ongoing right now. And uh, we are going to continue to bring you some of the images too from out there. And Sarah, maybe we can try and find some things on Twitter on our scan do um, to see if we can get some some images up of what was happening out in uh, Western Iowa. You can take that one from Aaron too there of the pool. But I mean, we have had such intense winds um, of of just uh, I mean 90 to 100 miles an hour that have been occurring here. So this is not something to mess around with. You want to stay away from windows. We've had reports out in Des Moines of some of the sliding glass windows that have been uh, broken, fences going down, uh, and we have just these incredibly, incredibly strong winds that are going to be moving through. I'm going to time this out here because I know a lot of people have that question of when is it coming here? So it's moving, it's getting right to Williamsburg and Sigourney now and moving very fast to the east at around 70 miles an hour, heading towards Williamsburg about now. Sigourney in the next couple of minutes, around 1220, Vinton around 1230, Cedar Rapids 1230 to 1240 is about when this is going to arrive. So we have about 20 minutes or so before the winds start to really pick up and we could be experiencing winds that perhaps get as high as 100 miles an hour. At least we're looking at 80 to 90 mile an hour winds. Iowa City around 11 or 1240, 1245 in Washington, 1250 in West Liberty and about 1255 in Anamosa. If we do have the peace scan do available, that would be great to show some of these images. So this is from Aaron and this was his aunt's pool in Norwalk. So that's further west, uh, but pool totally leveled from the winds there. We have had just a lot of scenes like this of people's businesses, doors coming in, people's fences being taken down, trampolines getting tossed into other people's yards. So you are likely hearing the tornado sirens, yes. And you are likely hearing, uh, going to be hearing some very strong winds as this comes through, as this uh, intense line of thunderstorms comes through the area. I'm gonna go back out to meteorologist Nick Stewart in the Road Warrior. What's going on, Nick? Wow. <laughs> Hey, Rebecca, I think you just asked me, yeah, right now we are on Highway 30. Uh, we're near the Van Horn area. Uh, we are, all right, here's a strong wind. We are just in the core now. All right, Jason, if you want to pull over safely, you can do so. We are now in the core of really intense winds. We got a big burst right there. Uh, you can see we are going probably about 40 to 50, and you can see the wind is going faster than we are. The rain's going faster than we are. Intense wind with this storm right now. We could probably see leaves flying through the air. That's debris flying through the air as well. Uh, Jason, let me get you a good crossroad here as soon as I can. Um, we got a road coming up and again, you can see really intense wind happening with this storm. We got cars. This car is just in, in oncoming traffic. I don't know what this guy is doing. Wow, okay. People, you need to get off the roads because I don't know what that was, but that was big problems. We got debris flying up the road with us right now. In about a quarter of a mile, we have a crossroad that we are going to pull off of. Uh, you can see winds are uh, ripping through right now. Uh, these trees are on the left, so let's slow down, Jason. Right, this should be our crossroad right about here. Yeah, go right. Yep, if you can. Actually, no. Watch out! Watch out the right. Watch out to the right. You're good. You're good. Uh, so again, really intense winds right now. Uh, just we should be good here, Jason. Okay, we are now in the really intense core of this storm. You can just see how fast the wind is going right now. A uh, really, really intense wind uh, with the storm as it moves down Highway 30. Uh, right now, we are right near Van Horn. This is coming right towards you in Cedar Rapids. Very intense wind is flying with the storm right now. You can see debris flying up the road. I wouldn't be surprised if we do see power lines go down at some point as well. 
very intense wind. Uh, Jason, if you want to pull up a little bit more, I'm a little concerned with the power lines behind us. You can go ahead, maybe about another 20, 30 feet, and we should be okay. Yeah, I think we're good here. We should be good here. Yep. So again, really intense wind with this. Again, this is right now just technically south of Van Horn on Highway 30. Intense, intense wind falling with the storm right now. I can pull up our wind sensor. The whole car is being moved as well with the storm. That was a wind gust of 72. We just picked a gust of 72 miles an hour, Rebecca. Yeah, Nick, um, I am just in that area here. So right around Keystone, right along Highway 30 down to the south where Nick is around Belle Plaine, uh, or sorry, Van Horn. 90 miles an hour is one of the radar estimates, and he's saying 72 mile an hour gusts. I would not be, I mean, you, you can see the corn bending, and you hate to see that. You hate to see, and you can just see how, how intense that is. And Nick go. is dealing with the, you can no, just see good, the good. incredibly low visibility, the debris, I mean, the car, the, a very, very big car being blown off. Uh, I mean, starting to see some debris there. We have seen so many reports of these homes and built businesses and buildings being damaged. And unfortunately, I mean, there, there's going to be so much loss on these crops, too. So this is right along Highway 30. This is coming to the east incredibly quickly, and it is going to be an intense period of strong winds as it comes to the east here. So this is the situation. Very, very dangerous thunderstorm. If you do not have to be out, then please stay inside and you want to just be away from the windows is going to be the key thing here as we're dealing with these intense thunderstorms that are going to produce winds of 80, 90, maybe even higher uh, in terms of in terms of the wind speeds. So this is heading to the east towards Cedar Rapids. I'm going to put on the reflectivity, the radar without the lightning right now. And just to show you, this is a bowing segment. So when you get this kind of bow that happens here, this is indicating very intense straight line winds. This is continuing to the east. So Nick is about here. This is coming to the east towards Cedar Rapids. And it is likely a bit weaker on this north side here, but still weaker means like 60 or 70 mile an hour winds as opposed to the 80, 90 mile an hour winds. So this is an intense thunderstorm that is going to continue to the east, likely also impacting areas down to the south here. Going through Williamsburg, you're likely experiencing those heavy winds and those strong winds. Marengo uh, heading towards Oxford, Norway, Newhall, Cedar Rapids, the airport, and then going to continue to trek to the east here. So if we can go to our scan, just, just another example. This is out on the highway on I-35 or no, Highway 169 around Ogden out in western Iowa, west of Des Moines, semi tipped over. So we are experiencing incredibly intense winds. This was from earlier and it is going to continue uh, as we go through the next couple of hours here as it comes to the east. Sarah, have you seen anything else from the National Weather Service that's come through? Yeah, we have a 70 mile per hour wind report. Sarah is on mic. I'm not sure if you um, some, One of them. Nick just said it peaked up on mic four. Hour okay, uh, can, we, can we check your mic, Sarah? Sure. But um, yeah. so we do have... Um, what did Nick just say? I'm sorry, you can just tell me. Mile 92 mile an hour winds sustained at 70 miles an hour. So we're seeing these very strong wind gusts. Sarah, we can check your box uh, on your microphone sure. so we can get that on. But we have, uh, I mean, look at where, where Nick is at. The corn is bending. Nick, can you just, I mean, explain to me what you're seeing out there. That's intense. That's insane. Wow. I don't, I don't know if Nick can hear me, but Nick, if you can, if you can just tell me what you're seeing out there, it looks incredibly <laughs> in, intense. This is insane. Well, that's, um, I don't know if Nick can actually hear me. I, that was the, 90. The storms oh, are very, very. We lost the window. We lost the back window. Okay. So we're going to. If you guys can take Nick's mic down, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna let them uh, make sure they get to somewhere safe. But in, an incredibly intense thunderstorm is coming through. If you know anyone who's on the roads right now and that can get off of the roads that are on anywhere from around I-380 south of what Waterloo to Cedar Rapids. Uh, on Highway 30, 151, Highway 6, Highway 1, I-80, incredibly intense thunderstorms, very low visibility. This is a 
dangerous thunderstorm that is going through right now and going to continue to go to the east along Highway 30. And this is heading towards New Hall. You can see that Nick has already passed where the edge of the storm is. And I mean, he is still experiencing incredibly intense winds. I don't know if it was the wind that literally blew out the back window of the Road Warrior, but it, it looks like it's getting even worse out there. I mean, that is incredibly strong. He said 92 mile an hour winds uh, and possibly higher than that. It looks like that they were going up. So just to show you uh, if we can get some of the numbers maybe to show you on here, but we have um, Bell Plain is getting out of kind of the worst of it, but heading towards New Hall. Um, we're getting a little bit of the radar uh, debris in here, but I'm anticipating that we're seeing a good swath of, yeah, that's not quite right, of 80 mile an hour winds or so, uh, maybe 90 and just some incredibly intense stuff. And I, I don't know if uh, anyone can let me know if we, do we, if we have Facebook Live going, because uh, we usually tend to get some reports through there. Um, but Sarah, have you seen anything else come through yeah, on so National we Weather talked, Service? Yes, yeah, so we talked about Marshall County earlier. That was the first one that was issued that 99 mile per hour winds. They're saying large sections of roofs blown off at this time. We're seeing cars overturned on the highway, trucks overturned, especially near more central Iowa after this storm passed through. And it really hasn't weakened over the past couple minutes or really the hour at that. And still getting tons of reports. We're seeing a lot of things on Twitter of power lines down. It is expected that lots of areas are going to lose power here shortly as the storm continues to progress over there. We're seeing lots of trees down. Um, really, these winds are hurricane force winds. I know Nick mentioned that before, but um, it seems like most reports are coming in 70 to 85 miles per hour, but we have had some gusts upwards of 100 miles per hour. So. Yeah, I mean, we've had, we've had multiple reports of these incredibly intense winds, and uh, we've seen people sending these photos of, I mean, here's uh, a business in Urbandale, so around the Des Moines area, several trees downed and the roof off of the building there. So this is just going to continue to get worse. We still have, I mean, we, we can even still see some of the sun poking through probably in parts of Cedar Rapids, but there's clouds starting to move in now. We have the, um, we are going to start to see this get very intense in the Cedar Rapids area in the next, um, just matter of minutes, the next 10 to 15 minutes. If anyone does have a, um, any DOT cameras or anything like that, any of the cameras like that that we can see along this storm, then uh, we can also look at, at that situation and see how uh, things are going. Can we just take Nick's picture? We don't necessarily, ha oh, we don't have Nick's picture. So they had very, very intense winds going on there and they are going to uh, hopefully get out of the worst of that shortly here, but we have these strong winds that have been in excess of 90 miles an hour moving into the Cedar Rapids area and going to come through Lynn County right now. So Nick is saying peak gust of 92 miles an hour uh, and we in the Van Horn area sustained at 70 miles an hour. Marengo at 60 mile an hour winds and that that's kind of on the southern side where it's a little bit weaker. So you know, around the Cedar Rapids, Williamsburg, Iowa City areas, that's really where I'm, I'm seeing the bigger concerns right now. Um, and even in some of these thunderstorms up to the north, 50, 60 mile an hour winds have been going on. So um, just an incredible amount of damage has been ongoing. Storm chasers in Marshall County, Marshalltown saying estimated winds of 90 to 100 miles an hour. And that is just upsetting after they have just uh, reached their anniversary and have been doing a lot of work there. So hopefully uh, not a lot of damage, but Marshalltown reports several large sections of roof blown off buildings uh, along old Highway 30 in the south part of Marshalltown. Um, and we have these these very, very strong winds heading to the east. And we are going to be seeing these issues come into the Cedar Rapids area very shortly. So New Hall is really getting in on those intense winds right now, heading toward the Vinton area and Shellsburg, Cedar Rapids, uh, Palo, Eastern Iowa Airport. If you're around the airport area, Cedar Hills, Worthington Acres, Ely. I'm just going to go in here and we're going to call out some names. If you hear your town name, you are going to be experiencing very intense winds here in the next 10 to 20 minutes. Fairfax, 
in Swisher, Walford, it's happening right now. The Oxford area, Tiffin, North Liberty, Coralville, Iowa City, and it's going through Williamsburg right now. This is an incredibly, incredibly intense thunderstorm, and we are going to have the thunderstorms just continue to progress to the east with nothing really stopping them, unfortunately. So um, if we can take the sky cam in Coralville right now, you can see uh, the thunderstorm starting to approach. The skies are getting dark. The emergency managers may be putting the sirens out a couple of times. This is for these thunderstorms producing winds of 70 miles an hour or greater. This will do more widespread damage than what we will get with a with just a tornado, unfortunately, because we're not talking about just one singular thing. We're talking about a big swath, big area. So I'm going to try and pull up some um, DOT cameras too and try and see if we can get some other views of what's happening in the area because this is not here. But we do have some very intense winds going on. Okay, so if you guys can take my weather scan do, this is, you can see people are stopped um, in the area highway 30 county home road v66 this is in benton county the camera is rocking there are just cars totally stopped visibility is down this is the intensity that is coming to cedar rapids and iowa city this is an incredibly dangerous thunderstorm lightning is ongoing there are likely going to be power poles that come down and trees that come down if you have to head out the door right now try to wait this is not something that you want to be driving out in. Incredibly low visibility. There's going to be debris flying in the roadway. Nick Stewart is a very experienced storm chaser who uh, that storm caught up. It is moving incredibly fast. And they went through that and had debris flying toward the car. The car is getting pushed off the road. There are semis and trucks stopped here. We've already seen trucks stopped in the area. In, and trucks that have been flipped over in the in the area from this thunderstorm. I mean, this like this is just incredible. This is this is an insane, insanely strong winds right now. Sarah, are you seeing anything from the Weather Service? Any more reports? Yeah, I mean, mainly the threat with this storm is the winds. Obviously, we've been talking about that. There is reports of small hail along with it, but again, really, we're just focusing on that winds. That's what's causing the damage. That's what's taking down the trees. You can see on this right here or on the camera that she just showed you at US 30 trucks are being blown off the road. That's how intense these winds are and that's really going to be the story for the next couple of minutes. And I know Rebecca said these storms are moving quickly across the area. They continue to push east, but for the most part, for the time being, as they head into Cedar Rapids and Iowa City here shortly, it's going to be very intense for the next several minutes. Expect these winds and expect lots of power to go out because we're already, I'm sure, starting to see that already as these storms push across. So um, yeah, I mean, we, I'm, I'm sure if we, I mean, you can look yeah, on probably like mid American and stuff like that and, uh, and a lion and see, mm -hmm. I'm going to try and see if I can find some other, other cameras out ahead of this, but I mean, we're going to see this come into the Cedar Rapids area and especially the South side of town. That's where I have my greatest concern on this Northern side. Um, you're, you're probably not going to get into as intense of the, of the winds, but Shellsburg, you could be still experiencing 60 mile an hour winds. We're still in a warning for 90 mile an hour winds here. And we're likely going to see possibly another warning get issued as uh, this thunderstorm continues to trek to the east. So this is coming closer to Cedar Rapids along Highway 30, especially toward the Eastern Iowa Airport in Walford. I'm sure that the winds aren't getting incredibly intense in that area right now. I'm going to see um, if um, I'm going to see if I can find some more live video of what's going on. But we do have we do have video from out in Tama. So this is a uh, roof torn off of a building there. Yeah, and bricks, it looks like bricks are down in the street. So this is in Tama. This just went through Tama and it's heading toward the Cedar Rapids area along Highway 30. And what you just saw Nick go through in Newhall, Norway, toward Eastern Iowa Airport on Highway 151 and, uh, and uh, Highway 30 there, where that cross section is, you're, it's about to get very intense and it is going to continue to go along I-380. If you know someone who is possibly commuting along I-380 right now, you need to let them know that this is a very dangerous thunderstorm and visibility is going to drop. They can get off of the road. I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of people that are going to stop and pull over and there's going to be a lot of issues there. So here, yeah, high, Highway 30 and 16th Avenue Southwest, Southwest side of Cedar Rapids, here it goes. It's starting now. 
The wind is going to make this incredibly difficult to travel in because there's intense rain. There's going to be debris. We have seen this happen. So just be aware that if you have to head out, it, it's going to have to wait because there are going to be people that are stopping. I mean, there are hardly people on the roads right now, and it is getting very intense. It looks like people are having a hard time even driving in it, and there's heavy rain, very low visibility occurring right now. And it's going to continue to the east toward the south side of the city of Cedar Rapids. Prolific lightning going on, very heavy rain, incredibly, incredibly strong winds ongoing. Uh, the National Weather Service is saying numerous winds of 90 miles an hour or greater, Benton County. Uh, several reports of damage. It is going into the Cedar Rapids metro area, into downtown. We are going to be likely experiencing some power outages and seeing a lot of debris, a lot of issues that are going to happen. We have seen multiple reports here recently of the of the thunderstorm damage ongoing here. So we have um, just this intense line of thunderstorms that's going to continue to produce strong winds and heavy rainfall and it is heading toward the downtown Cedar Rapids area. There, there are a lot of people on the highway. I'm just clicking around on our DOT cameras uh, and there are some people around the metro area, but the skies are going to get dark. Sarah, can you get, um, yeah, we can, we can go to the Coralville camera too. There's, yeah, there's Highway 30 and Williams Boulevard. You can't even see, I can see some lights flashing, um, but you can, you can hardly see what's going on here. And this is coming into Cedar Rapids now and it is going to go to Iowa City next. And we can see it. The wind's starting to pick up in Coralville. Could you go to our Cedar Rapids sky camera? Sure. And we can we can uh, see some of that too. So you can you can see some of the lights flashing here. Sorry, I think I might have control of, the, of that mouse. There's the Cedar Rapids camera. So you can see shelf cloud. The northeast side of town may get a little spared by this, meaning maybe we have 70 mile an hour winds or 60 mile an hour winds instead of the 90 to 100 mile an hour winds, but it's still going to get very intense around here. So there's the shelf cloud starting to come in and we are going to be experiencing very low visibility, very strong winds here very shortly. And we are going to um, just watch this come to the east here as we go through the next basically hour out of out of eastern Iowa. So as this happens, we're going to continue to see these intense winds. So I would expect to see these 90 mile an hour winds probably extending from I mean, close to Highway 100 down I 380 to the airport here and then down toward the North Liberty Tiffin and going to the Iowa City area. And I don't want to discount what's going on up to the north here. We do have multiple other severe thunderstorm warnings. I don't want to exclude you, but Waterloo, Manchester, Guttenberg, we have severe thunderstorm warnings that are ongoing and they are uh, producing some 50, 60 mile an hour winds, some heavy rain there as well. So did get in touch with meteorologist Nick Stewart and Jason Meyer who were in the road warrior. They are doing okay, but they did go through that very intense storm. So just showing you that uh, we, there are some issues out there. There are some, oh, we just had the power flash here. So uh, we, we are going to continue to see issues on the roads and just experiencing power outages and a lot of uh, damage likely going to occur, unfortunately. So uh, if we go to the scan do, here's Highway 100 and Covington Road on the weather scan do. And this is, I mean, this is close, getting close to the northwest side of town here. A very, very intense winds and low visibility. It doesn't look like it's wanting to wanting to go anymore. But this is just an incredibly intense thunderstorm continuing to produce winds of 100 miles an hour or possibly up to 100 miles an hour and multiple reports of 70 to 80 to 90 mile an hour winds. Um, right now, let's go back to the radar here and uh, there is, yeah, so the warning was extended and, um, okay, so we have 80 mile an hour winds for that warning that now extends out of Cedar Rapids to the eastern part all the way to the um, Mississippi. And um, I'm trying to make sure that I know that people, I've got texts that people have lost power now mm -hmm. and um, we are going to try and get this on Facebook so everyone can see what's going on here. But there is, uh, I mean, it's getting really intense by the airport. If uh, I'm around Ely, I'm assuming that Ely is starting to get in on this now and heading towards Bertram and Lisbon. 
So we have some very, very intense winds here. Let me see what I can pick up on. 71 miles an hour, 85 miles an hour. This is on the south side of Cedar Rapids. And then in the Cedar Rapids area, um, 66 miles an hour. Let's see. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm guessing scattered se uh, 70 to 80 mile an hour winds are going to be the concern here with some gusts that could get up to 90. So definitely something to just be aware of that Yes, if you have not been hit by this storm yet and you're still listening, you're likely going to lose power. It is coming to the North Liberty, the Iowa City area, the Solon area, and starting, I mean, it's really starting to move into Iowa City now, and it is going to be very intense at the moment. So we are streaming on Facebook Live, and so you can watch there if you do happen to lose power. I think we might be having an internet issue where we can't get the DOT cameras yeah. or there may be having an issue. But um, if, I mean, if we can look around the downtown Cedar Rapids area or anything like that, but here's, here's a look on the northeast side where the rain, a wall of rain is starting to come in here. And it is going to probably get intense here in the next minute or two. It's, it's coming this way. And you can see all the people that are out on Collins. And we have some very, very intense winds um, starting to come in. And there you go. It's just picking up now. And I can hear it. So you, you have these, I mean, the visibility is down. People have their headlights on. I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people are going to start stopping and we're going to have some issues on the highway uh, or it might be a couple of minutes here before we can get out of this. But I don't know if our, uh, what's yeah. going on now, we Sarah? We got a report of 73 miles per hour in Cedar Rapids. So, 73? Right, in Lynn County. So, I mean, I know you said we might be have a little weaker wind. 73 miles per hour is yeah. certainly still intense. Not yes. that 90 mile per hour gust that we were seeing. But again, it still has room to pick up. It hasn't really died down. And as it continues pushing through the area, we may get a little bit stronger portion of the storm, um, right. helping those winds to increase. But yeah, lots of tree damage already, um, trees and streets apparently. Um, I am getting, I did look up outages as far as Alliant and 83,000 customers across the state are already out. I got a lot of those will likely be in central Iowa at this time, still waiting for reports to come in with that as it pushes across really the major cities here in Eastern Iowa. But Definitely an intense storm. You can see that camera shaking uh, over the Cedar Rapids right now as it begins to move through. Uh, lots of rain coming along with it. You're starting to see cars. Obviously, you see their headlights on. They're driving really slow out there. There's a couple pulled over. Um, really stay home for the next yeah. couple of hours as this storm pushes through. Yeah. I mean, oh my, the, the doors just blew open in the studio. The, wow. The doors just got blown open. Wow. You can just hear you the intensity. <laughs> yeah, there it is. It's 12.30, but it feels like... <laughs> Very it, nighttime out there. Yeah, I mean, wow, <laughs> that, I mean, we have these very intense thunderstorms coming through. We have seen businesses, we have seen semis flipped over, we have seen homes, we have seen so many issues from these storms. They looked like a power flash. I think I just saw a power flash. I mean, we have, uh, we are going to be experiencing power outages and just, uh, the roar is going on and this is not a tornado. This is simply a thunderstorm with straight line winds that are likely upwards of 70 miles an hour or greater. And you can see debris flying it. The tower that is above us. You can just you can hear that. Uh, it's always an eerie noise. But if you're in your home right now, you want to stay away from windows, stay away from doors in your home, and you want to just stay in the interior and treat it like a tornado, lowest level of your home, because we are dealing with very intense rain and wind with these thunderstorms. This is heading through the Cedar Rapids area right now and heading towards Solon, Lisbon, going through North Liberty and Iowa City right now. It was moving our camera up there on the tower, hills, uh, and going to continue to the east. I mean, this sounds intense just from in here. I'm sure it sounds very intense in your homes. This is an incredibly strong storm. It just, it sounds very, yeah, very, very strong. We do have a canceled up on the Yeah, there's I-380 the at 8th Street. Street. So yeah. this is around the S-curve in downtown Cedar Rapids. I mean, you can just see like, it, you can hardly see, but it doesn't look like there are many people out there right now. And you can see some headlights, some people look like they're slowing down some. It's going to be very difficult to see out there. And also just, you know, not a time to be out on the roads, not a time to be going out of your home. Um, there are some people out, but they're moving very, very slowly right now. So we are going to just 
uh, continue to have these issues here around the Cedar Rapids area as this comes through. Now, when we get on the back side of this initial kind of wave and line, things die down a little bit, but we're talking about still talking about 60 mile an hour winds. So we're still going to be experiencing some very strong st winds as this comes through. And um, this and this is going through the Cedar Rapids Metro right now. This is in the northeast side of town where I mean, on our sky cam, we can hardly see anything. Here's Highway 30 and C Street south side of town. There's a semi just stopped there. It sounds like a very in I mean, it sounds very intense inside of here and there's the there's the sky cam and you can see I mean you can see the rising motion of the clouds there Sarah yeah, absolutely. it looks like it, I think it got pointed upward I, I really <laughs> think something because there's no way I do think um, it has been blown over that is not yeah, unheard of but, I, I um, hope it's still attached I hope we can show you wow, the winds point. are the winds are very strong it, it is very eerie the building it oh my gosh the building is shaking the bill it sounds like something fell on the building I think we need to um we're gonna just assess how things are here, but mm -hmm. the but, lights um, are shaking. Yep, things Please are stay rattling. inside of your home. <laughs> Please, if you're driving, pull over. Lots of cars have pulled over. Take shelter, get inside a store. It's, this is, again, tornado force, hurricane force winds. Our building is shaking. Yeah, we have in very intense winds going on. We're gonna go into the, into our, uh, master control to take shelter. We advise you to do the same. Very intense winds are going on. I'm gonna hope that you can still hear me while I do this. We have a very intense thunderstorm going on here in Cedar Rapids where we let, I mean, we can see things swirling outside. So we're walking through the building here. We are trying to get to shelter here. Mm -hmm. And if we look out the window, we can look through the door right now. It literally looks like a tornado is occurring. That's how intense these winds are right now. It Four pounds down. Transformer outside. Transformer blew up outside. We we could see power flashes. The doors yeah, to the exterior saw. part of our building are opening and closing. It looks like a it looks like a tornado is occurring. <laughs> I mean, we have things whipping around. Very very intense winds, um, and we have uh, this is going into Iowa City. There are trees coming down. Very large trees, and we are we are in a safe place so i can't exactly tell you what's on your screen right now but i can tell you what's going on outside and you need to be in an interior room and away from doors and windows so in iowa city same deal quinton if you could if you could describe to me what's on the screen what it looks like in iowa city yeah, so I can sort of see it a little yeah, bit. It looks yeah. like there's rain falling there. Again, it's, it's still not moving. quite it's, as intense. It's not what we're seeing here in Cedar Rapids, but you can see the rain, the clouds moving in, and it likely will be very intense there momentarily. Again, the storm is moving pretty quickly across across eastern Iowa. Winds aren't really dying down much. It looks, a look at our radar it looks like cell towers are down. It's things are hitting this building. It looks like very large tree branches are down. And uh, I mean, I know my phone has no cell data. Yeah, uh, I'm not it, if you can, if you are in advance of this thunderstorm, if you're in Anamosa, if you're in the areas like uh, Iowa City, you are going to be experiencing some incredibly intense winds. You need to stay indoors and be prepared that you may lose power, you may lose cell service. We have incredibly incredibly intense thunderstorms coming through the area right now that are like i mean this is 90 mile an hour winds this could be this could be just very intense thunderstorms that we it's widespread this is not just a a tornado warning in one localized area it is widespread across the area and quentin if you have any more cameras I can pull up i'm watching you right now i can see from the control room take that cedar rapids camera I don't know where it exactly is pointing, but we have, we can, yeah, you can't see anything, but there, yeah, there's flashes going on. There's possibly thing, I mean, it could be pointed anywhere right now, but we have visibility that is totally down. Large trees I can see outside. I mean, the wind is just rushing. It is, I have, this is like you're in a hurricane. Absolutely. And it's, yeah. it's prolonged and intense. So we are going to have to stay away from the studio for right now until this passes through. But we can see, yeah, we can see the Pentacrest camera in, uh, the, in Iowa City there. And it, that's, it's going to start to get more intense there. So what you're seeing in Cedar Rapids, that's starting to get into Iowa City now. 
and we are going to have the intensity pick up. So you can see the lowered visibility in Cedar Rapids. It is going to start to drop in Iowa City, and it is, I mean, this is prolonged. This has been 20 minutes maybe this has been ongoing here as it started to pick up in the, in the Cedar Rapids area and we are going to get out of the worst of it here yeah. uh, gradually but it's still likely going to be some very intense winds that are ongoing upwards of right you know 60 miles an hour winds or so as we go through here so um as you can see we have the thunderstorms ongoing and they are going to be going through Cedar Rapids and you can see the patio here. So here's debris littered, littered. I don't know what hit our roof, but something hit our roof. Does anybody know? Something hit our roof. Something came down something and hit the down. roof of the studio. And you may be hearing that too in your homes. This is intense. This is a very strong thunderstorm. It looks, it doesn't look as bad as that sky cam looked, but I'm still looking outside right now and it, uh, on towards Collins and it just looks like a, a bit of a, a war zone like after a hurricane you're looking at da widespread damage I'm sure that I mean I we've heard that trans the transformer blew I'm sure that there are trees and power lines that are down so we're gonna take a deep breath <laughs> <laughs> we all are this is not over this is going to continue to go through eastern Iowa and we are going to continue to see these incredibly strong winds that are going to come through the area here. Yeah, so the verdict is it was around or a little above 80 mile per hour as it moves through Lynn County here. Fairfax, that was the report. It does seem like we've hit the worst of the winds at this time, but it's still pushing through the area. You're still gonna, it's, it's still gonna be windy, just dying down slightly. Plenty of rainfall coming along with it. Still looks like it hasn't died down much out there. Um, it's, I mean, it's still dark. It looks like the worst of the winds are maybe starting to back off uh, in this northeast Cedar Rapids, but there's still, I mean, there's still, it's intense. There's just leaves splattered on our door. There's, um, it's just a, a lightning and possibly power flashes of, of these things going down. And um, yeah, I'm trying to see if we can if we can pull up some more information on from the weather services. We're out of the studio at the moment, but once we can get back in there, yeah, okay. Well, the the doors are blowing open again, so we're we're not quite out of the woods. But we oh wow, that was a very large tree. Very large tree just came down in in um, right at Broadcast Park. Very large tree. So we still have some, some intense winds to get through. We're not done, as I said, and we're still not done with the area either. So um, so they're saying 80 mile an hour winds in, yep, in Cedar now, Rapids. Now we're looking at 70 mile per hour. Like we said, when you first start moving that storm across, you're gonna get probably the most gusty winds along with that. Now that Cedar Rapids is more in the central portion of the storm, we're seeing 70 to 75 mile per hour winds. Sirens should be sounding out there. I mean, yeah, I'm sure that they are <laughs> if they if they can. I know that they in the emergency. Uh, wow, I just that's just intense. Um, in in the emergency headquarters, they I was talking to Steve O'Connell earlier or O'Connick earlier, and he was ready. But uh, I mean, here's just a look. I three D Collins Road. Intense winds going on northeast side of town. And this is what we're experiencing here. We're looking out the door, and we're away from the door. I promise, we're far enough away but you can just hear noises, things are hitting the roof, doors are being blown open. There is just a lot of intense, intense wind and rain ongoing here. Yep. And we are going to continue to see tree damage, power line damage, transformer damage, and all this kind of stuff we have. Um, multiple transformers have blown and large yep. tree limbs down in Iowa City. Yep. We have uh, large tree limbs down in Fairfax. We have a 90 mile an hour now a severe thunderstorm warning for Cedar, Clinton, Jackson, Johnson, Jones, and Lynn County. This is not over. We are still going to be experiencing incredibly, incredibly intense winds. If you are hearing about these reports and you're in these areas, if you're in these areas that are east of Cedar Rapids, Anamosa, Tipton, Wilton, Maquoketa, Eldridge, Davenport, Muscatine, if you know anybody traveling on these highways, on highway, on I-380, mm -hmm. still right now, Highway 30, I-80, heading to the east out of Cedar Rapids and Iowa City, this is heading that way. It is incredibly intense right now, and it is not done. And uh, we have one of our engineers just 
saw there's a very large tree down outside. Um, hopefully everyone's cars are okay. Um, maybe not. But hopefully, uh, if you... Yeah, we just got a wind gust report of 100 mile per hour in Hiawatha. Wow. So that is Northeast Cedar shocking. Rapids. So we thought that... Wow. I mean, it is very intense out there still. Right. This is... This, this, it's hard to tell on, on the radar when the way that this bent up to the north, we thought maybe we would escape some of the worst of it, but then it got intense again. It picked up again in Cedar Rapids. So we're talking about over 100 mile an hour winds. And this is a look, I, I can't, I mean, you can kind of see debris flying. I don't know what happened. Hopefully our camera's still on the roof. We're not sure, but um, it is still low visibility going on. Uh, we might just be pointed up at the clouds at this point. I'm not really sure. That's what it looks like. But then but, again, with the wind and the rain, we have really no idea. It just glitched a little bit, as you saw. It might be losing some connection there as well. but. Yeah, we're basically centered in this storm right now, so we're about halfway through the worst part of it, theoretically. It's going to continue to push through 70 to 80 mile per hour winds out there still. Again, 100 mile per hour reported in northeast Cedar Rapids. You can just hear the intensity of these winds coming in. Um, we're, we're in the hallway. I don't know if you can hear that on, our, on, on here, but it is, yeah, it is very, very loud and very intense. Okay, so we have video from Iowa City of uh, mm -hmm. It's from the Emily winds. Chavez. Yeah, the storms made its way to Iowa City again. It did come a little bit later than we saw in Cedar Rapids. You can see that curve there. But for the most part, Iowa City is also centered in this storm. Not getting winds as great as we're getting here in Cedar Rapids. I think the one I saw was 80 mile per hour there, but still, so still very intense. Very intense. That's still incredibly strong. Um, and we have just this damage is going to be extensive and it's not as i mentioned done mount vernon you're getting in on this on these very strong winds martell moving through springville anamosa and going towards morley olin stanwood tipton mm -hmm. this bend that you're seeing on the radar on your screen that mm -hmm. is a an intense derecho a bow echo of a thunderstorm that is going to be coming through and leading to the leading to the um, intense winds that are going on out there. The, the building is still shaking here. So here is a live look in Iowa City. And you can see the buses are stopped. I mean, rain and wind, I mean, you can just see the wind. It's, it's very, very intense there. Um, I don't think our Cedar Rapids camera is really quite capturing what's going on anymore, but okay. So here, we're, here's a live look inside of our studio. <laughs> the studio here's shaking. Why, why we're not That's in there left. right now. <laughs> But um, the, the lights, the ceiling is shaking. We could hear everything shaking in there. So this is why it's so important for you to be in that lowest level mm -hmm. of your home, to be away from the windows and away from the doors because we have these intense winds that uh, they're, they're just kind of ebbing and flowing. I just saw a flash outside. It looks like these whirls are going on, these like little whirls of uh, like, it doesn't necessarily look like it's a tornado, but it does. But you like should it's be a little treating whirl. it almost asthma yeah, with these winds. Is. Stay away from the windows. I mean, people are reporting that their doors are getting blown out. I would not be shocked if ours got blown out here. They keep flying open. Again, we still about halfway to go with this storm for the time being. Most of uh, Lynn expires at 1.30. Uh, the western portion expires at 1.15. So, you know, in the next 20 minutes, hopefully this is going to die down a little bit. But that's still an extended amount of time that you have to be dealing with this storm. And there's Iowa City. You can see on the ground uh, the winds blowing and then the Pentecrest uh, view from higher up above. We have um, the, it looks like it just stopped maybe, but they, they were, you would see it shaking. The doors here are, you know, blowing open. And that's what you just heard there. We are in the hallway. So I just want to let you know that we are safe. We are in uh, far enough away, it might just sound a little loud, but we are far enough away that we are okay. Uh, and once this passes, hopefully we can get back in the studio, but we have very large trees that are down. Mm -hmm. The tower is still up, right guys? The tower is shaking, that's never good news. Um, but here's a look from our camera. I don't, the camera might not be attached. But um, it's, uh, it's not showing much for us right now, but just showing you whatever's going on up there. It looks like we're looking straight up at the clouds, I think. But we have just these intense winds, these flashes going on. Either it's a lightning flash or it's the camera actually flashing itself. But um, this is continuing to produce these very, very strong winds on the order of 60 to as much as 
100 miles an hour. Right, it looks like a little bit further south towards Iowa City, far down towards Washington, winds are not as intense. You can sort of see that on our radar a little bit, but if you look in Iowa City right now, again, I, oh, they showed our radar, there you go. A little bit further south, you do see it's slightly weaker, but not by much, like we said. It's, I think it's, it's definitely gonna be different at the ground level when you're just watching this. Um, you know, and this, unfortunately, I want you to stay away from your windows. We will show you video. We, I'm sure we're getting video, but we have these, the wind and the leaves and the branches and everything that are just going to continue to, um, just going to continue to come down and cause issues here and cause the power to go out. So here's video from Bell Plain uh, that they have. Uh, and yeah, this is what we're looking at. You can, you're just seeing the winds very intense, the rainfall very intense, and it is going to, it's taking down trees. We have, I mean, very large trees outside of Broadcast Park. Or like, Corey, are they all down? They're almost all down. Almost all of the trees are down. Um, so we have the, just, this is going to be the case across the area here. As this comes through, we had reports of winds of 100 miles an hour in Hiawatha. Here's Iowa City where things maybe not quite as intense, mm -hmm. it looks but like, you know, it doesn't seem like they have as many reports of trees and branches in the street. You can see that on that cam right there. So they said 70 mile an hour winds. Yes. Minor damage new construction sites have on, been ongoing in Iowa City. So we do have that. Um, widespread street, tree damage in Cedar Rapids, numerous high wind reports, okay. um, numerous power outages, trees down in West Liberty. If you are to the east of here, and I'm going to emphasize this, we are we are broadcasting on Facebook Live. You are going to lose power. You may briefly lose cell service. Mine came back. Um, but if you are to the east of the Cedar Rapids area along Highway 30 to I-80, be prepared for your power to go out. Unfortunately, we're going to have tree and crop damage, and we are going to have um, yeah. we are going to have these power outages that may last several several hours, just like we saw a couple of weeks ago. But yeah. we are going to have. Um, we're getting reports of most people in Cedar Rapids do not have power. Yeah. Not I shocking. Would, I would those wins. Most, yeah, most yeah. people don't have power. Yeah, especially so on that northwest side. I know I got a text from a few people, and they were asking if we were on Facebook Live. We're on Facebook Live. We're here. And if you lose power, you can go to your phone and see it there. Uh, hopefully your phone is charged. And uh, this is going to be just a very intense period of time. And here's a look at Broadcast Park right outside. So, I mean, yeah, everything's pretty much down. And there are not many trees standing out there. No, um, and, and things, are, things are coming down. There's just like leaves splattered it's likely going to look like a bit of a, I mean, like it reminds me like after hurricane, you step outside and you're dealing with this very widespread damage. Um, we have we have this very intense area uh, yeah. of wind and just uh, just seeing the, the, the way that it's blowing open the doors and the way that the leaves are splattered yeah, on look at our, our studio, it's shaking again in yeah, there. You splattered can see it. On, the, on the glass, I mean, and yeah, I mean, we, we have a big tower that sits above our, our studio and mm -hmm. we have the ceilings shaking in there. Luckily in the hallway that we are, where we are, um, that it is, um, that it is, it's shaking in that studio. Where we are here, we are, um, we're in a more solid zone mm -hmm. and we are still experiencing those winds. It has been, I don't know when we first started to get those winds, but Shellsburg now saying estimated gusts over 100 miles an hour. Multiple campers blown over. Yep. Shelter at the roof blown off. Uh, shelter roof at the park blown off. Um, we have. 100 mile per hour winds still. Yeah, still. These have been multiple, multiple reports of 100 mile an hour winds in the area that have been prolonged. It looks like the flash in here just now. I mean, we, we have the transformer that was blown. Uh, you can't really see much on our Cedar Rapids camera. Once we can get back in the studio, maybe we can see some other things in the area if the rest of the cameras are still surviving. But we have, we can't tell you, we can't show you everything right now, but widespread tree damage, widespread power outages, and this is going to continue to the east. 
we got about, oh, here's a, we're showing powder, power outages right now. You can see widespread across Cedar Rapids. I mean, it's almost impossible to keep your power on with winds upwards of 90 to 100 miles per hour across the board. It's probably going to take some time to get these all back on. But again, with these winds, hurricane force, tornado force winds, it's going to blow over those power lines. And if it's not doing that, it's going to blow over all the trees. Again, not very many standing here in Broadcast Park taking out the power lines. We do have, it looks like, about for Western Lynn County, 15 more minutes in this warning. Hopefully by then we're just getting some widespread rain and thunderstorms, not nearly as intense, but far Eastern Lynn County and far off towards the Mississippi, that one goes till 1.30. So we do still have a good amount of time that we're gonna be seeing these damaging thunderstorms and winds and still here, it doesn't look like it's died down much. I do think it was most intense for those first couple minutes as the storm progressed in the area. You can look at our studio though, it's still shaking in there. Still can't head back in right now. Again, those lights are rattling. That's the camera that you're seeing there too. I, I'm just looking at uh, some of the estimates on my radar on my phone. And I mean, they're still showing some winds of around, uh, around 100 miles an hour. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that's translating totally to the surface. Um, but we could still be seeing some, some very intense winds. So here's a look at Cedar Rapids damage uh, in the area. I mean, the, the branches that are down, it looks like possibly cars, uh, windows that were maybe blown out there. Awesome. But, um, I mean, it is all coming down, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And we have still some more of the storm to get through. So it, it should, it should kind of quiet down a little bit, but this, it looks like it just kind of cycled back up on the uh, back behind here. Mm -hmm. And, um, we've kind of been just been having that kind of ebb and flow from what we've been seeing outside of the of the winds picking up and dying down and if you are heading towards Anamosa or if you are in Anamosa, Olin, Loudoun, Durant in areas like Tipton, you're probably getting in it right now, Wilton. These are areas that are up next and these storms are moving at 50 to 60 miles an hour producing winds of upwards of 100, 100 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour. We have had multiple reports, confirmed reports of 100 mile an hour winds. Please stay away from the windows. And even, I wanna stress this too, where the storms have come through, you need to wait. I know that everyone gets antsy about the power being out. Please do not go driving around. There are likely some power lines down. There is likely going to be a lot of issues. There's likely going to be some obstacles to go through, some trees that are you, you're going to have to go through to drive. So that's why we would prefer if you just wait, let the cleanup crews get to what they can, let this storm pass through because it is going to be likely dangerous to be outside it. I mean, it, I've been through a hurricane from Florida, like just knowing the afterwards of that, you can sometimes get into these situations where there's widespread dr damage going on. There was a Pentacrest really quick there. Yeah, so it looks like I mean, it's died down a little bit in Iowa City for the, the most south part. The south side looks like it's kind of, it's just not as intense, but there's still probably some good 60, 70 mile an hour winds going on. And we have just this little area, what it looks like in Cedar Rapids of, of rotation, mm -hmm. of where there's just this enough spin going on that that this, this clash, right yeah. this clash is leading to the winds that are continuing to be intense. And um, and that is what is causing the problem, I think, in the Cedar Rapids area. And if we have the radar up, um, mm -hmm. yep. there you can see it kind of like bows back into Cedar Rapids. And it's like it's we refer to this as like a comma head. And so you draw a comma, it has that, mm -hmm. sometimes people draw it with like a period and then a line down. That comma head is that intense period intense area where there's likely rotation going on, that's what's likely causing these 100 mile an hour winds. Yeah, and so we're gonna catch the back end of the storm here shortly. Like she said, it, it is continuing to build with each radar scan, we are seeing it. So we're gonna, we're gonna be dealing with some storms for the next couple of minutes at least. Again, it is supposed to expire at 115, may get a little bit extended as the storm continues to kind of curve around that way. But at least on the western side or the eastern side of Cedar Rapids, again, towards the Quad Cities, towards the Mississippi, you've yet to see these storms and they're not dying down too much, still producing these winds upwards of 70 mile per hour at this time. Um, not seeing, again, still getting the storm reports, several trees down, hasn't, I mean, I'm looking out the window here in Cedar Rapids, we're still getting gusty winds out there. It doesn't look like it's dying down much. As Rebecca mentioned, we are seeing a level of rotation on the radar, mainly because you can see that kind of spinning around there on our radar and it is, you know, gaining strength there. And that's where we're seeing that rotation. It does not necessarily mean we're seeing a tornado. It does mean that we're seeing 
those winds, those cycling, and I'm sure if you're, you can see anything outside right now, you are experiencing that as well. I'm still seeing branches and everything blowing down around there, at least for the next, I would say, 15 to 20 minutes, especially here in the Cedar Rapids metro area. We're going to be dealing with these intense storms down south. Uh, if you continue down again in Iowa City, Washington, really almost in the clear there, still experiencing some thunderstorms. They weren't nearly as intense as what we saw beforehand. Um, they're kind of on the back end of those now, really just some widespread thunderstorms and heavy showers, still seeing those winds. But here in Cedar Rapids, we're not done yet. We're um, still kind of catching the back end there. Steve, don't walk away from me just yet. Okay. Okay. Well, we're, we're having some issues, I guess. I wanted to, Steve was just outside kind of examining what was going on. So I was just wondering if his, his account of, of how things were outside, but we do have some very, what, what were you asking? How, you, how it was outside. Uh, every tree in the yard is down. Okay. Our tower is shaking very badly. Yes. I could uh, hear that. The, the tower is shaking. Trees the, are down. The white building is now green with leaves. The building's green with leaves been just covered. Um, and it's, you can't see across the street. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's intense. Uh, and I mean, we, we haven't been in the studio for probably uh, 30 minutes, minutes yeah, maybe. I don't know. Uh, we, we left a while ago. Um, so I haven't been able to move the radar. It looks like it, I, I mean, it's in a good enough spot that we can <laughs> see everything. Spot, yes. um, but I did want to talk about the fact, I mean, um, I don't know if, if Jordan wants to show here um, that we have, I can't change anything on our map in the studio, but we have this area that we were talking about that comma head and then here's the values of the rotation and i know that's a little hard to see but this is radar scope and it's showing these very bright pink purple blue colors that's just showing you how intense the winds are and it just kind of cycled around the cedar rapids area and marion and robbins and hiawatha and springville those are the areas we've been seeing those reports of 100 mile an hour winds and that is where the intensity has been occurring so we need that to move to the east but unfortunately as it does if that holds together it's going to go back it's going to go into springville springville's going to experience more of that um and cedar rapids we've been stuck because we're stuck in that we're stuck in that comma head that we were talking about. We're stuck in it. And that's why it's been so prolonged here, unfortunately. And it has just been able to cycle and intensify. And I mean, I wish I could look at some like maps of the mesoscale, right, of what's um, going on out there. you know, atmospheric conditions, but I, I can't know. exactly examine it. Mm -hmm. We do know there are very intense winds ongoing right. out there right now. So uh, Jordan, you can go back to the regular radar. Um, I know this is a little difficult to see, but this is what we got in the hallway at the moment. Yeah. Um, the last so, report that I saw, I did lose service on my phone again. Um, we had power out in Coralville, north of I-80, east side of Iowa. I would expect most areas to lose power, at least for a time being. I mean, especially here in Cedar Rapids, we got several reports before I could not connect anymore, but majority of the Cedar Rapids metro area not experiencing power right now. Down in Iowa City, especially um, to the north side of I-80, power outages. And again, that's where we did see those heavier or more damaging winds for the most part. Yeah, and I mean, um, we are just, still hearing of these more more of these reports come in so um you yeah we're we're just standing here in the hallway just uh just trying to give you guys an idea of what's going on so midway in lynn county wind gust of 112 miles an hour i don't know where exactly midway is um do you know where midway is steve well i would imagine it's somewhere nearby and we are i'm not surprised by that unfortunately um, it's between here and Center Point. So Northern Lynn County, that's kind of that area I was talking about in the north there around Marion Springville and that zone where we have been stuck in that kind of rotate, rotation of that area there. And this is going to continue to the east. Um, West Branch already seeing 70 mile an hour winds. So the southern side of this has progressed a lot more than the northern side. And that is now where we have, um, you know, these uh, the warnings are going on for, I think, 90 mile an hour winds, mm -hmm. but West Liberty in Muscatine County, several large branches down with power flashes, so power going out there. Um, and we are still experiencing that intense wind here in Cedar Rapids, but to the south, down I-380 toward Iowa City, it's going to start to calm down now. Mm -hmm. So we're going to maybe see those 40 to 50 mile an hour right. winds. Uh, we are going to have, it's going to end. In Northeast Cedar Rapids on the northern side of Lynn County, it's still kind of intense and we can hear it outside. And uh, hopefully they'll let us know that it's safe and the lights haven't all fallen in the studio. But um, for now, we are, we are dealing with this and, and we're dealing with this. 
uh, I mean, a semi over. And we've seen mm -hmm. this happen even when we don't have thunderstorms. Right. We have 70 mile an hour winds. We're right. talking about possibly 90 mile an hour winds around the Swisher area, maybe 80 mm -hmm. tipped over a semi on the highway. That's right. why we were talking about, you know, let's let's not drive uh, right. right now. And if if you if you know anyone um, oh. that's out there, yeah, then this is the kind of stuff that we're seeing. So Midway is. Uh, um, by Toddville, okay, so all the way up northern Lynn County. Yeah, but um, this is this is Sw that was Swisher where the gas station was, yeah, with the roof off mm -hmm. and damage there. Yeah, and um, this is it's still intense in northeast Cedar Rapids. I don't want to discount what's going on down to the south though here. So we have these strong winds that are now moving through, and it's not as strong as what we were seeing earlier. You can actually see on the radar it's starting to like it's starting to become a little bit more orange rather than the red. It's starting to become a little bit more broken up. It's not as intense down to the south, but it's still intense enough. It, we're, not, we're not talking about 100 mile an hour winds, thankfully, but we are still talking about, um, you know, probably upwards of 70, 80. Um, sure. So we have large branch in Muscatine down. Um, yeah, a branch with four foot diameter. And that's the other thing too, a lot of these reports are coming in. These are not just like little trees that are falling over. They're yeah. big, you know, well-grown trees that are being blown over. But when you have those winds upwards of 100 miles per hour, I mean, you can, you can expect that. I mean, yeah. So we had one of the warnings let go now in, in Western Lynn County and Benton County. We're starting to get into that relaxed stage, but still parts of Cedar Rapids, Anamosa, Iowa City still included in this, but it's starting to kind of back off there. Mount Vernon, you're likely dealing with the intense winds. I would say around Springville, Mount Vernon, Mechanicsville, Olin, Clarence, Tipton. You're likely still dealing with some of this intensity. And it's heading toward, it's going to pick up in Clarence. Um, yeah, I mean, the, and this is what you have to look at uh, that's going to happen. This is Southwest Cedar Rapids. You can see these trees, large trees, very large trees blown down. Um, I've heard in my neighborhood there's trees, there's a tree in my yard, I guess. Um, so, you know, we're, we're probably always, we're, we're probably all dealing with this. Uh, and it is, it has been very intense. I'm going to try and see if I can see any more. I've seen a lot of reports on the National Weather Service. Mm -hmm. um, on Twitter. Yeah, we just got one for 60 mile per hour in Iowa City. So like she said, it's kind of backing off. We're on the backside of that storm there. That was actually a couple minutes ago that we got them getting them a little bit delayed here because of service, but it is backing off. Looks like heavy rain in Iowa City for the time being. Still windy, but not nearly what they experienced a couple minutes ago. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's it's definitely kind of winding down, but Wilton now, um, they have a spotter in Wilton, which is just south of I-80 and heading towards the Quad Cities area, but they are saying 90, 80, 90 mile an hour wind gusts, uh, limbs down eight inches in diameter. So still very, very intense stuff. I mean, um, we have in Hiawatha, two foot diameter trees uprooted, shingles torn off of house and power out. I think we're all, we're all kind of prepared for that. If your power's already out, we probably got a bit of a long road ahead because <laughs> I would guess a lot um, of places are, it looks Also, like. like Des Moines and Ames are all out of power. It's most of the state. Uh, so, yeah, big chunk of area here, basically south of Highway 20. Now, I don't have it on this radar on your screen, but there are still some thunderstorms going up to the, going on to the north. Luckily, you've kind of been out of the worst of it, but around Monticello, mm -hmm. uh, you know, still probably some winds, maybe like 60, 70 miles an hour. Yeah, you, you can, can kind of see that at the top of the screen there. It may get a little worse. Um, for the time being, that storm that we're kind of seeing in Cedar Rapids is progressing a yeah. little bit more northeast, Northern, yeah. and so it's probably going to move through there. Um, the warning that you're seeing on the screen, the Benton and Lynn one, was expired or is going to expire here shortly. So again, uh, more Benton Lynn, just seeing heavy rainfall at this time. Eastern Lynn still seeing those intense storms. There it goes. It updated. So this one that we're focused on right now goes to 1:30 for Cedar, Clinton, Jackson, Jones, Muscatine, and Scott counties. That's going to be there for the next couple of minutes. Wouldn't be surprised if it got extended a little bit for some of these counties. Um, it has seemed to slow down just barely. Yeah, it, it just seems like the it's kind of cycled in the north too, that it's it's just wrapped around kind of in the back and that's where it's just lasting a bit longer. And really around tipped into uh, now the Anamosa back towards Cedar Rapids, Marion Springville is where it is the most intense. And now like looking outside here now, it, it looks a little yeah. bit calmer. We're still getting rain. <laughs> and it's still raining and, and windy, but we're not seeing that. Like, I mean, we literally had things constantly splattering against against the uh, 
um, door. And yeah, so I mean, the Cedar Rapids camera, I'm not sure where the Cedar Rapids camera's at, guys. I think it might be pointed up to the sky or down to the It could roof. be on the ground. We really don't yeah. know <laughs> at so, this time. So, I mean, we have um, a big tower. This is about 500 feet up. And you'd imagine the winds 500 feet up are actually more intense than what's happening at the surface, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, so, I, we, we'll see how the state of the camera. So, um, I was just talking to the to Steve O'Connick, who's at the uh, Lynn County Emergency Management Center, and um, we he's he's saying he's doing okay. Uh, they are so they're one sounding the sirens and keeping an eye on everything. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask, do you guys, Steve, Corey, do you think we can go back into the studio? Should we wait? Let me take a look. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys can see the studio camera. How is how's the state of the lights? Oh, looks like calmer. A little, a little shaky. Maybe okay. we wait a little bit longer. So it's a little shaky in there. Um, if they, if they let us go back, that would help because we can, we can kind of show you some more things. Um, yeah, Sarah can go in there and move the radar just quickly so we can. Uh, yeah. So we'll we can a little bit of a better get a good view, view of, of what's going on as the storms move to the east. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait to see if the engineers say it's okay for us to go back because, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, we can take the power outage map. I can come look in the window so. of the control room. But, um, oh, they're telling me I can go back. But yeah, there's power outages like everywhere. So everyone is, <laughs> they just laughed at me for saying that. <laughs> I, I can't really read it right now, guys. But um, we do have some obviously, okay, 200,000 customers, mm -hmm. 460, what? So 200,000 customers without power. Okay, so we're back in the studio now. Yeah, we can so, do a little bit more. So it looks like we got three major warnings in effect right now. This main one for Cedar, Clinton, Jackson, Jones, Muscatine, and Scott counties until 1.30. Again, it may get extended because like we said, it is wrapping around sort of here in Cedar Rapids. But for the most part, the, then there's another warning extended almost out of our viewing area. We get some of our counties in there for Carroll, Clinton, Henry, Rock Island, Scott, and Whiteside counties. That goes for almost an hour until 2.15 p.m. Again, this storm, really, this storm is really kind of dragging along a little bit further south. Again, almost out of our area, getting Washington County just a little bit there. But for the most part, the one that we're focused on here is the one for Cedar Clinton, Jackson, Jones, Muscatine, and Scott counties. It looks like the storms to the furthest north I know we were talking about one up in Monticello a little bit there has expired. Yeah. That's let go. So we're, those are likely some some weaker on the weaker side. Um, but this we're back in the studio. Things are not shaking, luckily. So the lights are still on. Uh, we're OK. Um, we hopefully you are OK as well. Uh, so there you can see the studio. Everything's all right. One of the lights looks like it's flickering a little bit, but everything looks OK. Um, we know that there's extensive damage outside of our building. Um, I I'm not going to go out there until that is deemed safe, but I am going to check on everything that has been going on here. And we we have been monitoring what the weather service has been saying um, here and there, but we have these intense winds ongoing. So I'm gonna show you a little bit more of what I was trying to show you on that iPad earlier, but here's a look. So it's right here in Lisbon now where this intense wind is likely occurring. And what is this going to show me? I'm guessing um, 100 miles an hour, 104 miles an hour. Lisbon going around Mechanicsville to Olin. And I would imagine there's unfortunately going to be some extensive crop damage that's going on. So, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go through this radar and kind of see how this kind of evolved. But you can see these little ripples that were kind of happening. And you see these purples and these greens pop up. And that was the cycling of the storm. And this incredibly intense swath of... Um, of winds just going through this area here and continuing now to the east. So if you have not yet lost power and you are in these areas around Anamosa, Tipton, Wilton, I'd imagine you probably have already. Now this is extended to the east and moving out of our area, the worst of it at least, and moving into the Quad Cities and toward the Mississippi, but we have just very intense thunderstorms still ongoing where power is going to go out. And, when, and the trees are going to come down and the corn is going to be bent, unfortunately. Uh, from Steve, who is the emergency manager for Lynn County, they're on generator power, multiple reports of damage across Lynn County. Uh, he's still working on assessing it. I was just checking in with him. We usually try and check in with each other. Um, I can see, um, so uh, my apparently neighbors um, 
tree is on their house uh, in Marion. Yeah. There's a uh, neighbor's lost their three seasons room. Trees are down. Yeah. I'm just hearing a lot of, it just sounds nasty. Um, and we have reports of businesses and homes that have had damage. And this is, um, you know, never something we want to see, but we had something that in intensified incredibly quickly. And we had started to tell you this morning, there was a possibility of strong winds. And this is not something that, um, you can always tell right away how it's going to evolve, but it evolved into a situation with winds of 100 miles an hour and possibly still ongoing in some parts of the area here. So prolific lightning is likely what we've been seeing, these flashes that have been kind of ongoing. And we also have um, these very intense winds on this line here. So the worst of it, at least on the east, is starting to move out of Tipton and Wilton. There's probably still some pretty intense winds there around Anamosa. There are still likely some very strong winds mm -hmm. just south of Monticello. And then that warning did get extended then into into Dubuque County, Bernard and Dubuque and Cascade and such dealing with that. And then around Cedar Rapids, it seems like things have started to calm a little bit. Um, Sarah, could we maybe see if we can get another sky cam? Yeah. Maybe we can get. Sure, um, sure. I can just see. I at, I a lot of the DOT cams are either out or yeah, Wi-Fi isn't pulling some, up very carefully. Some internet so. problems, I would imagine, but. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or, so I don't know if our Iowa City camera. It, so yeah, you, you can see the storm is that. Kind of is that might be frozen. Yeah, that um, is. <laughs> I would right. guess that was earlier when the when the right before it came through. Right, so here's Coralville. Coralville we can see. So that's definitely calmed down a bit. Um, and this is kind of getting on the back side of that now. So some lighter rain, still some winds. You can see it shaking. That's on top of the Skogman Realty building. So definitely still some intensity going on there, but calmer than what we saw earlier I'm clicking on riverside yeah not again windy there but for the yeah. most part the worst has passed in those locations um i'll just calm it down just a little bit there yeah and uh we have i mean we have just trees down around cedar rapids uh, i'm mm -hmm. sure there's uh, let me i'm gonna yeah. take over this computer okay. for a second and try and see yeah if I can Nick uh, Nick posted some things if he's seeing um, okay so all yeah, right let's go. go to the peace can do so here's Nick in Van Horn he is okay, by the way. Barn has severe damage, truck blown off of a road, highway signs completely knocked over, and corn flattened. So here's the barn. That was a stop sign that was totally knocked over. Oh, man. That's not what you want to see. Yeah. You can see the ears of corn, too. It's just such a bad situation. And I, and unfortunately, when we, when we saw that this was that intense, uh, we knew that this, is, this was going to be an issue. Um, and we knew that there was going to be some some damage like this so i'm going to check in with the weather service um so yeah i'm not seeing much coming in on there at there's this some time. green elevators mm -hmm. uh, i think they're just kind of like hearing of, of damage as it comes in but um you know sporadic reports of wind damage along highway 20 corridor from some of those thunderstorms that are up to the north now there's tornado warnings up in in wisconsin yeah. So we're not dealing with that, but we, I mean, I don't, I think we maybe would prefer something a little bit less widespread and intense, but that's um, just, just very, very intense stuff going on. So Fairfield, we actually do have the Fairfield camera. I don't know if that's still ongoing down there, but um, winds, uh, small to medium, tree limbs knocked in down, knocked around downtown. So we talked about the Southern side. Oh my gosh. Southern side of the uh, area was kind of de-intensifying. So, Outside of our broadcast park studio, we have a yeah. we have a patio. I know they're I know they're work they're working on getting you guys a shot of what's going on out there, but there there's just leaves everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm guessing you're probably seeing a lot of tree damage, a lot of damage ongoing. I'm gonna I'm gonna check in. Um, there's I'm hearing of people taking shelter. The Amana, uh, that's my friend that works at the Whirlpool in Amana said they're taking shelter. Uh, so luckily, I think things are starting to calm down down that way. But um, we have just a widespread damage that's likely going on and still some areas that are probably dealing with it too. So um, I'm going to just check in. I don't know if our, on our Facebook feed and see yeah. if people have any questions or have any reports that have been passed along there. But Marion, uh, damage to mobile homes on Highway 13 and Highway 151, estimated winds of 90 miles an hour which is also not surprising, unfortunately. Um, we have, let's see if I can, 
there's not, yeah, there's not much that's been passed along by the Weather Service. But just to show you, um, you know, we, we still have some intense winds going on. This deep blue, that's wind going to the east toward the radar. And some very intense winds going on toward the, the, the um, mm -hmm. Quad Cities area. It's starting to back off, but we likely are still seeing like 40, 50 mile an hour winds around Cedar Rapids, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see. Um, I'm, I've gotten, I'm getting some, some messages from people. Neighbors trampoline hit our house and took out our deck. Um, I'm not quite sure where that is located. I th um, but just, just some of the reports that we're hearing. Um, yeah, lots of people are writing in here that roof or shingles have been blown off. Yeah. Um, Mitch commented a little ago, very little visibility. I mean, we kind of mentioned that too, looking out the door, you can't see across the street for that time being. It has backed off now. Visibility has regained as far as I can tell when looking outside now, yeah. but lots of people saying sirens are sounding. That's going to happen when you have winds greater of 70 mile per hour because it's very intense. It's damaging. We got lots of issues going on along with those gusts. Yeah. So my concern is now in, in Mechanicsville um, in Clarence, uh, just north of Highway 30, maybe around Morley towards Olin, Oxford Junction and Cedar and Lynn counties. That's probably where we're seeing some of the uh, higher intensity winds now, maybe getting to that 100 mile an hour mark. Um, uh, and there's uh, just, uh, I hope, hopefully backing off some, but we I mean, we're just hearing of so many reports, uh, roof damage just north of Wilton. So we had been talking about Wilson, Wilton earlier, that's south of I-80. Um, significant tree and property damage in Swisher, uh, roof damage in West Burlington. So we're starting to get into this area down to the south and east where that's where the intense intensity is located. Mm -hmm. Um, and yet, yeah, this, this thunderstorm warning that you're looking at here is supposed to expire in three minutes. I would imagine it's going to get extended to a degree. We're still seeing lots of lightning and wind with those storms. Um, but like she said, it is, it is dying down a little bit as it continues to progress, but still a, another storm again sitting fairly far off to the east or a warning that's going to continue um, for really the next 45 minutes. I believe it expires at 215. But yeah. Yeah. So we have this warning until 1:30. So they're gonna I, I, there, and then there's another one that kind of encompasses Cedar and Jones counties until 2:15, um, I believe. Yeah. So um, yeah, still dealing with that. Still dealing with that. Um, but very, very, very intense winds. Still, it, it still reports a 75 mile an hour. You know, normally 75 mile an hour would be the tops for the day, but we're talking about 100 mile an hour winds that have been ongoing. So here's, here's a look of what's currently the situation at Broadcast Park. There is a very large part of the tree that's come down there. And I mean, if, I don't know if we can point it down to the ground at some point, but um, we do have like just leaves all over the ground and just, it's just all over the place. Yeah. Covering the ground. Uh, and I would guess that your house probably looks the same, that you're probably also dealing with the, a lot of debris and likely no power. Um, there's still lightning going on out there. There's still some rain going on out there. There's still some wind going on out there. So I know that we're all eager to kind of get outside and assess the situation. Um, but I do want to just remind you to be safe when doing so because it is still, you know, we have power lines or transformers that are out and uh, some of that stuff we don't want to, we don't want to be caught up in. So it'll be, I'll see what the weather service has to say about this, but uh, Muscatine, 58 mile an hour winds, 70 mile an hour winds. Um, Wapalo was about an hour ago, they had 50 mile an hour winds. So that's also south. So it's those areas down to the south where, where it wasn't quite as intense. But um, we do still have, um, I mean, just these incredibly intense winds that are doing damage still across the area. So um, it did look like they decided to expire it. I'm not so saying they expired that shag. warning. No. So they may be letting that just take over to the east here. Mm -hmm. So we still have portions of our area that are dealing with the intense. I mean, Wyoming is probably right in it now. I I'm kind of surprised because I think Olin maybe still has yeah. a bit of the strong winds going on. Um, Right, and just based on velocity, it looks like they're still getting winds up there. So, um, so yeah, next couple minutes at least, it'll still be intense. Yeah, around Morley to Olin, Oxford Junction, I'm still thinking that that's pretty strong stuff. 
uh, Clarence, Loudon, and stuff like that. Um, and we have just just really intense stuff. I wanna, I, we do have Symphony outside. Uh, so I'll, I'll uh, let her tell us a little bit about what you're seeing out there and then what it's been like the last like hour here in Cedar Rapids. Hi, Rebecca. I mean, I was right next to you in the hallway. The doors were blowing open, windows were shaking. We saw trees blowing when we were first in our newsroom, so we had to sprint back to the hallway to make sure we were in a safe place. And it's finally safe enough to come outside. You can see the rain is still coming down pretty hard. It's not near as bad as it was a little bit ago, but it still is coming down. And we see leaves everywhere. We saw a lot of trees around our building fall. I want you to see that, so I'm going to step out the way. And just look at that tree that's right in our patio. And it's all down. And that's one of the smaller ones that we've seen with damage over here. But we're starting to hear thunder. I'm sure you can hear it right now. Haven't seen any lightning, but the thunder is starting to boom again, and the rain is just coming down pretty good. And we're going to throw it back to you and keep assessing the damage out here. We'll continue bringing you live updates. Thanks, Symphony. And yeah, I mean, we we are starting to see things quiet down some, uh, which is good for us in Cedar Rapids. But there's still this, I mean, intense marker of winds. Um, so this is in Cedar and Jones counties where we're looking at and around Wyoming, 80 mile an hour showing up here, 109 and 102. I mean, there's still some spots where it's showing up um, pretty, pretty intense. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I do want you to be aware of is the radar. It goes um, it goes up. So it doesn't go straight across. It do, the beam goes up gradually uh, with with distance away. So we're we're maybe catching winds that are a little bit higher up, but that still could be translating down to the surface into um, 60, 70 mile an hour winds. We hear sirens outside. I mean, uh, this is. This is just uh, going to be a, a lot of cleanup that's going to happen. So here's a look at Northeast Cedar Rapids, just like we are here. Um, roof damage, wind and trees, uh, trees on the roofs. Um, and it's just, it's everywhere. And you can just see, this is, this is extensive. This is extensive damage that occurred in Cedar Rapids that occurred in the, I mean, Northeast part of the city in the metro area. Um, I haven't seen much from downtown, but it really, we thought maybe we'd get out of the woods in the north, mm -hmm. but it, it cycled. It cycled up to the north and just led to it being, it, it was long lasting and it intensified. So that is why we ended up seeing those stronger winds there. And we, you know, we started to ex literally experience it here as it happened. So the, uh, even the National Weather Service just reported their phone lines have gone down. And they're asking if anybody has any reports to report pass it along on social media. I'm sure a lot of people are still experiencing the same issue with power outages and such. Um, I was going to see, um, I think we got some, we have a bunch of stuff from some of our reporters who are out and about. Mm -hmm. um, but here, if we can go to the scan do, the weather scan do, Emily is uh, out in Iowa City and um, she was saying that you can just hear the wind, a lot of debris around. Um, and, you know, it looks like the downtown area is in a bit better shape than what we've been seeing comparatively in Cedar Rapids. So that is good news for Iowa City. Um, but we have uh, still, I mean, I'm sure some more damage that's ongoing in portions of Cedar and Jones counties. Now, this is starting to break up or move out, really out to the east, at least the most intense part of it, east of Anamosa and Clarence. Now, Anamosa and Monticello may still be dealing with some 60 mile an hour winds for a little bit. We have some rain that's back here and um, that is still going to be ongoing for a bit. So it's probably gonna take a while for things to clean up and, um, and the power to come back. I don't know if we have any estimates from anywhere, but yeah, I'm exactly. sure that it's gonna take several hours for things to get cleaned up. So just to kind of give you a, a look at everything here, um, and I can, I can also pop on our, all of our storm reports, um, but we have, I mean, it's littered. You can just see where it went. We talked about south of Highway 20, around I-80. That's exactly where things set up here. And these are reports of of the wind damage and the wind gusts. And there are multiple wind reports that were 90 to 100 miles an hour. Incredibly, incredibly intense thunderstorm complex that moved through. Uh, and we have, you know, power lines down, trees down, extensive 
extensive corn damage, I'm sure, and um, just a lot of a lot of issues that are going to stem from this uh, that are going to last a while. So we have this power outage map, and you can see um, to over 200,000 people without power. Uh, if we can maybe like go into the Northeast Cedar Rapids area, maybe just click on one of them. They tell you like, um, oh, well, I can look too on Alliant, but they can tell you how, how long or what their estimation is. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, it's everywhere around the Cedar Rapids metro and you can just see why. We had, we had the very intense line of storms coming through. So if we can go back to the weather scan do Sarah found mm -hmm. Dion Broxton, our reporter. So over, um, about an hour ago, yeah. So this is in downtown Cedar Rapids. I mean, it, yeah, it looks like nighttime. We can go to the weather scan do Jordan. But um, it, also, it also shows you the contrast of what can happen within an hour. I think he posted this just as the storms were starting to move into yeah. downtown Cedar Rapids. And you can still and, see the wind like right. whipping around on the ground there and mm -hmm. um, just how dark it got. I mean, it looks like nighttime, it does. Mm -hmm. looks like nighttime so he uh, he's like by the cedar river there you can see and um i mean it just just intense so we we at least do have things starting to kind of quiet down in the cedar rapids area um there's still some strong winds here in portions of cedar and jones counties so wyoming and clarence and tipton North, new liberty still dealing with that we have this front edge here so you likely get the intense winds and then there's still some intensity back here that's maybe mounting more towards 60 to 70 miles an hour. Um, but this is where we're probably finding some of the, the stronger winds. And then we're starting to see that kind of break up where we had that issue over Cedar Rapids with the 100 mile an hour winds. It's it seems to be kind of calming down a little bit. So let's see. Um, trees down in Coralville mm -hmm. and powers out. Um, it does just seem like a lot of trees, branches. I mean, you, we talked about outside in our patio is just really covered in branches and leaves at this time. That seems to be the theme around the area. Um, the power lines are down, obviously. We're losing power in the majority of the area. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at our Riverside Sky Cam right now. It has calmed down a little bit, but the wind is still on the backside of the storm, is continuing for the time being, still raining out there. Like we said, there's going to be a lot of showers behind this. It is raining in Cedar Rapids, probably will be for the next couple of hours. But for the most part, in the majority of our area, those strong storms have moved off east for the time being. But yeah, so we, we got um, we got a little bit more uh, just kind of south of Monticello, maybe where it's kind of still intense, just east of Wyoming. But that, that part is starting to move out. And before we before we let this go, um, we are going to I want to show you a video from Nick. Uh, Stewart, who was in Benton County, if we can go to our uh, weather scan do, but uh, just along Highway 30 in Benton County, you can see Green Bin, uh, like, it looks like part of it just down. Wow. I mean, this farm has just got a lot of damage, unfortunately. Um, and you can just see the power of the wind bending that um, silo. I mean, it's just, it's intense. Yeah. Absolutely. And so this was this is in Benton County. So he was in Van Horn. Um, there's another green bin that's yeah. like right on the road where it's not it, supposed it to be. It literally looks like tornado damage. Yeah, I mean, but there wasn't. It's a it's straight line wind. I yeah. mean, just straight line winds, just right. blowing things straight across. You know the difference because it's blowing things straight across. Tornado damage, you'll see things kind of in a swirl. But here you see things are just kind of tossed straight, straight out. These east winds going on. I mean, all this kind of tossed around. Uh, along Highway 30 there in Benton County, and that that's likely what it looks like in Tama County. We likely have a lot of these um, power lines down, uh, trees down, large trees down, uh, corn down, and there are going to be um, very very intense. I just, yeah. just, I mean, from these intense winds, you're going to have this very very extensive damage. I am seeing a lot of reports on social media that nearly almost everyone in Lynn County has lost power <laughs> for I, a time being. Um, I would guess so. Yeah, I mean, lots of areas in the central portion of the state as well, but it really did gain some strength as it moved into our area, and people are probably going to be without power for the time being. Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, if you uh, are watching us on Facebook, um, we are we're going to wind down on our coverage here shortly, but um, I, I do want to try and get some information if people are mm -hmm. um, wondering about something. I mean, like at least with Alliant, we can maybe see um, like yeah, when they're looking at power coming back, um, but it's going to be probably a while. 
uh, and um, this this was just such an intense, widespread kind of swath here that we were dealing with yeah. of um, of storms and it doesn't. It's kind yeah. Of I think the website me. it had. I oh, had some pulling them up too. Um, so I mean, yeah, just like yeah, Lynn County is littered, um, and in like Northeast Cedar Rapids. I mean, there's just tons and tons of these neighborhoods that are without power. Um, so mm -hmm. they're, they're looking at like 3 p.m. in Northeast Cedar Rapids for restoration. So an hour yeah. maybe, but we know last time, it, like the whole city was without power. Right. And we had, um, you know, we had to right. wait a little bit longer. And it's important to note too that, I mean, we're still getting some of those winds. I mean, you can't you can't fix the power lines when it's pouring right. rain and you, and you got the winds going. So and if you- It's probably gonna take them a yeah. while. It looks like around Unity Point, hopefully, I mean, I know the hospital probably back up there, um, generator and there and such. So, I mean, yeah, it's like all of Lynn County are dealing with this. Uh, all of Cedar Rapids is dealing with this and um, it doesn't want to show me all the what times, but I'm guessing that yeah. it's going to be a couple of hours here that we're going to have to deal with these power outages. Uh, and it, it, if you are looking for more updates, we are going to be, you know, updating you on Facebook, on Twitter. We'll be back at 5 p.m. Hopefully the power is back up by then. But we have a lot of still rain to get through here to the back on the back side. The winds are dying down, but the rain is and still some maybe 30 40 mile an hour winds are going to be going on so the intense part of this is starting to really back off here now so that is good news yeah and we actually our news director just came in that the marion police department is saying please stop the 911 calls for mm. the storm damage okay they're aware of a lot of storm damage they're evaluating the situation but um do not call 911 for that reason obviously unless it's a life-threatening situation right i would imagine they want that cleared up to make sure if there are any injuries or there's anything serious that's going on uh any fires or anything electrical that's going mm -hmm. on that's a big issue i would imagine that's the case like everywhere um that that's the case that you know if you uh just don't call the emergency line if you need to call the non-emergency sure. line but i'm sure that all of the police departments around here they're all aware of the situation mm -hmm. and um they are um they're going to be working on it here so mm -hmm. we we do have um a lot of cleanup that we're going to have to get through across the area big big area here and to show you some of that symphony's outside of our studio here broadcast park um, oh, she's inside here, but she's going to talk about some of the damage that's uh, gone on outside, uh, which we know is extensive, Symphony. Yeah, that's right, Rebecca. Well, I was just outside. We had to come inside because we started seeing that lightning, so it was too dangerous for us to be outside, but things had settled down a bit. But now I wanted to explain what was going on with this window. We saw it just start to shake and it was booming. And so that's why we ran and we went to the hallway. But if I step out the way, you can see, we've told you about all the damage around our station. Look at the tree. That's a different tree that's down right there. I'm told that if you go to the front of our station, the whole tree line in front is down. So we have trees down all around the building and we keep seeing the rain out there. And I think things are settling down a bit, but we'll keep bringing you the latest. We're gonna try and get you a live hit of that other storm damage out in the front of the building, but I'll send it back to you in the studio. Thanks, Symphony. Yeah, I mean, we, we know there are very large trees here too. And we've heard that like all of them are down. Um, I'm hearing about a lot of damage in my neighborhood and Marion, uh, I'm sure that when we both go home, we are going to have uh, no to yeah. wait for the power to come back. <laughs> sure. um, and this is going to be the case for a while, uh, for several hours here as we had, just to recap, 100 mile an hour plus winds. Um, I believe 100 miles an hour in Springville, Hiawatha reported, uh, around Tama County, they were saying they were sure it was 100 miles an hour winds. I'm sure that we had uh, 100 mile an hour here in Northeast Cedar Rapids. It was it was quite intense. So we had this this line of storms that just raced. This is a three hour loop. And these storms raced from I-35 to the Mississippi in that period of time. So the combination of some very intense winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere and the storm motion of 60, 70 miles an hour led to these winds of 100 miles an hour being produced at the surface. And now we have a lot of cleanup ahead of us here. So we have um, 
we obviously are going to have to deal with power outages. Uh, we're going to have to deal with the trees being cleaned up. And just another thing, if you have not, if you did not hear us earlier, please don't call 911 uh, mm -hmm. to tell them about storm damage. They want to leave that line open for life threatening situations. I'm going to guess uh, that was from Marion. PD, mm -hmm. they said that. I'm going to guess that's the case like in every PD Probably, in every town yeah. that's dealing with it right now. Uh, and also another thing I want to stress is just give it some time here and wait for things to get cleaned up before you start driving around and looking because it is going to be a lot of stuff in the way. There's going to be a lot of um, the trees and power lines that are down that may be dangerous that they're going to try and clean up. So before we start looking around and stuff, we want to let the emergency crews kind of take a take a look at everything. So still some very intense thunderstorms heading to the east. This is around Dubuque, um, Bernard, Bellevue. They had some wind damage up this way. And now uh, this is heading toward the Mississippi. And this warning does go until 215. I would imagine they're going to scale this back in uh, Cedar and Jones counties. It's starting to wind down some around Wyoming. Uh, there's still some kind of strong winds in the northeast there. It's, it's starting to back off. It's definitely stronger around the Wheatland area into Clinton County and uh, toward Davenport and such. So this is starting to, to kind of to calm down in our area here and wind down. Um, if you were with us earlier, meteorologist Nick Stewart is OK. He was in the Road Warrior. He did uh, have the thunderstorm there. Uh, basically, right in Van Horn, likely was experiencing 90 mile an hour winds or greater. He is doing okay. He has been getting us video and showing us some reports of what's been going on there. And now we have this activity moving out to the east, and we are going to assess and um, bring you the latest on all the damage across the area and what has happened as this moves now out, and we can get a look of how things are. But um, have you? Have you seen any more reports come across? No, not really. I mean, like, we're, we're getting some wind reports. I guess it hasn't died down too much. A wind report of 77 miles per hour in Rock Island. Yeah, but so, so that, that part, it's winding down in our area at least, so that part toward the Mississippi, sure. that, that right ahead of it right there, that's where we're going to see the intense part. Right, right. So that's still going on for sure, but back towards our area. Yeah, not seeing any, yeah. anything new. What was the Asbury in Dubuque County? In... Uh, looked like there was a report there in Dubuque. Um, um, trees down in Viola Roadblock. Um, 70 foot tall tree top. 70 foot oh, yes, tall okay. tree toppled in Asbury in Dubuque County. Um, that's pretty pretty strong there. And that, that wasn't even really in the worst of it. Muscatine, large trees down. Um, you know, the, yeah, this is all really starting to go to the east toward the Mississippi where the where the intense parts are. So um, that that is good news at least, but there's still like some very prolific lightning going on around Dubuque uh, and Bernard. Mm -hmm. Heading now towards Bellevue, Maquoketa, Welton, uh, Clinton, Davenport, and, and continuing now into Illinois and continuing into Wisconsin. Uh, so unfortunately, it is going to still persist down to our south and east, but we're starting to see that calm down, at least in our area for um, CBS 2 and Fox 28. Now, Symphony is uh, going to show us some more of the damage that's been going on just here in Broadcast Park, Northeast Cedar Rapids, likely what a lot of people are uh, probably seeing outside their windows, Symphony. That's right, Rebecca. You know, you've been showing pictures and I've been trying to show what I could here. We're outside, you can see the rain is coming down, but there is a lot of damage out here. I'm gonna step out the way so you can see Look, our satellite is literally down. There's a giant tree right next to the other satellite. It is pretty bad out here, you know. All the trees around this is exactly what you're seeing around the entire area. If you can pan to the right, Quentin. So over there, all the trees, our entire tree life has fallen down. These are really, really big trees. And they have just completely split in half. There's just a lot of damage out here. And you know, it's like this all around our building. It's right good all around the area. And things have settled down. You know, all we're dealing with now is that mild rain. So it's really not bad, but there is a ton of damage out here. Just covering the entire area. We also have, walk up here a little bit, Quentin. Can you show that the power lines are down? So right there, the power lines are down. And um, there's actually crews out working on the electricity right here, right up that broadcast bar. Just in front of our state.
location and there are so many trees down and even one of our satellites like I just showed you. I'm gonna send it back to you, Rebecca. Yeah, I didn't think, we, we were hearing noises and things hitting the roof, shaking this room here. So we are in an exterior room here in the studio and we have doors that go right out to our patio and then our satellite farm if we've driven past on Collins and Old Marion Road, which you can't go on right now, but um, we do have, um, we, we are right by the exterior and we were hearing things hitting the ceiling. I don't think I've ever, uh, ever thought we would lose a satellite but uh, we have a lot of big trees and a satellite down here at Broadcast Park. And uh, Symphony, if you could not hear her, was saying we had uh, power lines down. There looked like an Alliance truck that was uh, nearby that was uh, trying to fix things up, probably trying to clear out the road. So we'll see if we can um, actually drive around here. We're not sure. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have just, uh, you know, some, some really intense thunderstorms that move through. So the worst of it's really starting to get out. And Dubuque, um, I'm not even sure how strong they're saying those winds were, but maybe possibly up to 70 miles an hour. I um, do know our, our camera there has gone down, so oh. that's not live. Yeah, that's <laughs> I'm not sorry. live. Yeah, <laughs> but, that was yeah, way before. So, um, so um, you know, we have a couple of reports uh, around Cedar Rapids. Clinton's reporting 69, 69 mile an hour winds, um, 75 knot wind gust. So that's probably close to what 80 something, maybe close to 90. Um, and so um, they have, uh, I mean, very strong winds still in the quad cities into the east. Cedar Rapids, heavy damage reported, um, heavy housing equipment. Mm -hmm. um, I was just trying to see what Dubuque's warning was for, but they were saying, I think. Um, 60 mile an hour winds maybe, but it's back there. So, so I think things are starting to certainly um, kind of calm down here in the Eastern Iowa area with the exception of right along the Mississippi. That's where the intense stuff still is. Um, and it's starting to kind of clear out of the Davenport area and Clinton and Maquoketa and such, but some very, very intense winds had been ongoing. And so, um, we, we obviously have extensive damage that's been ongoing between areas um, basically south of Highway 20 near north of I-80. We do have Emily Chavez who is out in Iowa City and uh, she had been sending us some videos and um, some pictures of what had been going on down that way and I think she's going to talk to us here shortly but she, she has been... Um, she was out there and uh, saying that they had some strong winds as well. It did not look as intense as Cedar Rapids, so I'll be interested to see mm -hmm. what exactly the damage looks like there. But um, we will go to Emily now. She was just setting things up there. But Emily, tell us what you're seeing there out in Iowa City. Yeah, that's right, Becca. Well, if you can take a look behind me, you can kind of see all the debris that's going on. As you can see, all there's so much branches, so many branches, everything down in the Ped Mall. Earlier, the wind was crazy. The buses actually had to stop. I, we, were in the old we were in the Memorial Mall and the lights were flickering, the Wi-Fi cut out. It was, we heard sirens going on. So right now people are starting to walk before people were very hesitant. As you can see, we're gonna kind of show you all the damage around all the, the debris falling now. Here's downtown Iowa City. I'm not sure if you can see, but way down there, there is actually a traffic light that is down. A bunch of debris just all over. Now we've been in the Memorial Mall for about like two hours now. And between them, we could hear the wind inside of the mall. We, the, our lights were flickering, our Wi-Fi was going in and out. But now, traffic is starting to pick up and before like I said I mentioned the buses were down everything it was it was kind of scary uh, and I'm sure that you guys saw through the sky cam that it you just couldn't see outside so now it has lightened up we have heard a couple of thunderstorms uh, thunder here and there and then lightning as well people are starting to walk out again traffic is starting to resume but there's just so much debris out there Whew. The wind is starting to pick up though, as you can probably hear. But we will be keeping you updated throughout and just all 
of the damage that's going. So we'll keep you updated and make sure that you follow us on Iowa's News Now for all the updates. Live in Iowa City, Emily Chavez, Iowa's News Now. Thank you, Emily. And I and I don't know if she can still hear me, but I heard and this is this is um, from from a resource that uh, the doors were blown off the main entrance of the UIHC. Um, so there it's possible that there was some damage to the hospital. Uh, if maybe Emily can check that out and uh, make sure that they're OK. Obviously, a lot of glass at the front of the UIHC. So um, Hopefully everything's okay there. I mean, the building, the patient rooms aren't that close, but uh, it's possible that there were some issues there. So hopefully that can get checked out. And um, I am seeing some more from Nick. If we can go to our weather scan do, um, here's a look at power lines down, sheet metal wrapped around the lines near Atkins in, um, in Benton County. I'm gonna click to another one so you can stay here. Here is, um, Trucks off the road, lots of damage to barns and homes, especially roofs in southern Benton County. So you can see the roof exposed here, um, something that doesn't look like it belongs there. Um, and then a uh, semi blown off the road, I mean jackknifed. And Benton County, you can see they're just totally pushed off of the road and into a power line. Uh, and there's that. But um, there's, uh, this is from Jillian. Um, downtown in Cedar Rapids uh, where I mean you can just you can see we were all dealing with this heavy rain and and the wind going on there so I mean I'm getting tons of reports from people of of this damage that has been that had been reported today um, and on Center Point Road um, there was uh, the radio station KXCL I guess had some damage there um, so there's just a, I mean, there's a lot. It is, it is everywhere. It's uh, very extensive and Nick is out still in Benton County. I think trying to get back with all the power lines down and such, he's doing okay. Um, cell service is probably kind of, uh, funky here and there. Um, but it's, uh, you know, we are all going to have to wait and uh, just kind of wait for everything to get restored and come on back. So um, I'm hearing around my neighborhood, um, trees down in the street, trees uprooted, very big trees. I have a lot of big trees in my neighborhood. My one neighbor's tree, very large apparently, is down in the driveway in the street. Um, they're shutting off one of my neighbor's gas. So that's obviously a big problem if we have gas leaks, mm -hmm. um, if Absolutely. we've had any damage. Um, and so that's a big problem. Um, I did have that report um, from a friend about UIHC possibly having issues there. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have the, the, the hospitals in downtown Cedar Rapids as well. Um, Alliant just emailed me saying they're hoping it's restored by 3 p.m. That's great, but I think it's probably gonna take a while for everybody. I, I, there are some people commenting on our Facebook and it's not shocking given we thought the storms were a little bit weaker down in Iowa City that there are areas that did maintain power down there. So okay. it does seem like the Cedar Rapids metro area kind of got the worst of it. Seems like Lynn County um, just totally. Yes, yeah. I know that was one of the counties that they were, yeah, you know, stressing was having the most impact. But for the most part, for the time being, a lot of us are without power. It, it does seem like across the board. Yeah. So um, as we're, you know, just kind of gathering some more information, Symphony is um, Symphony is going to join us in a second. They're working on uh, getting her ready outside. So we're with the process here. But she is going to talk to us more about uh, some of the storm damage and uh, an account of what's happened out there. But we have so much that I'm still working through. And I'm sure people that are just starting to get out and get pictures of things. Um, I had a friend, one of our coworkers, Rachel, um, roof, patio, and shed are um, no longer uh, standing or um, are, are damaged. And um, so, you know, she's saying they're okay. They lost power though. They're in Southwest Cedar Rapids, I believe. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to see if I'm yeah. sure I'm getting Facebook messages so there of people. Is kind of another update there as you would expect scaling back that severe thunderstorm watch that we did have an effect mainly for the western counties it seems like they're going to continue to scale it as the storm moves off more towards the mississippi and into guess. illinois yeah um, so so if you are wondering about that aspect of it thing of things here we are this is this is the thing for today <laughs> and and this is this was a particularly dangerous situation watch 
that was um, that was posted and now we're starting to get it scaled back and it will be exiting the area here shortly. So mm -hmm. Symphony is outside right now and uh, Symphony, tell us what's going on in Northeast Cedar Rapids. Hi Rebecca, I just walked across the street to talk to our neighbors across from Broadcast Park and almost all of them have big trees in front of their house just like we do all around the station. And I want you to see right here this one house their trees have fallen. They told me they have three big trees over here and you can see limbs covering their area. It just happened to miss their car. Luckily, they parked in a different spot for once. We're going to go and we're going to talk to Shelby and Leah right now about their experience. So this is Shelby right here. This is Leah. Shelby, start off with me. Tell me a little bit what you heard, what you felt and what went down. Uh, well, in the beginning, she was just kind of like yelling at me to get downstairs and I'm in Iowa, and so I'm like, ooh, what's out the window? Are you sure? And then all of a sudden, it looked like you were on TV in Florida, you know? And so I, we heard the first big crash um, on the roof, and we were like, oh, no. And we, like, scurried downstairs, grabbed our kids, a uh, uh, dog and cat, I guess. So, um, And then we were just downstairs, and through all the windows, we heard shatters and just clunk, clunk, clunk. And we thought, then we started hearing water come in our basement, and... It was freaky, like nothing I've ever experienced before. I was just shaking, and so. And how are you feeling? Uh, well, I was on the phone with my mom, <laughs> and then we like lost her in the middle of it. So I was panicking a lot and just not knowing what was happening upstairs. We just got our roof done last weekend, so <laughs> just trying to figure out like, okay, we have a wedding in two months, and we just got our roof done, and now how are we supposed to pay for all of this? That we don't know what's happening upstairs. And you told me that the power box is down. Yeah, it got ripped out. So uh, we got a power box in the back, and it just kind of, the tree smashed it on the first clunk. And so then water was just coming through our fuse box and flooding our basement floor. And so I went back, and it's like our whole, um, like, eaves, is that what we call it? Our fascia is just completely bent down. That tree is laying on our roof up there, so... And you said that part of your neighbor's roof is on your house as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep, our, our neighbor Molly, she just got her roof done too, and that's all over on our roof and all up in her yard over there. So. And you said you're from here you, and you've never experienced anything like this? No, I'm from Iowa, and so I always come out in the yard to see, like, is there a tornado, is there not, you know? And I that's why I was looking out the window, and then all of a sudden I was like, oh, okay, we need to go downstairs. <laughs> Did you imagine, you know, you heard it, but did you imagine it was going to be this bad when you walked no. outside? No, not at all. No, I thought there was just going to be a couple trees, but it, it, clearly there's more than a couple trees. <laughs> you know, so like we've been telling you all, it is just pure devastation out here. You've seen it. We experienced it firsthand at Broadcast Park. It is a bad situation. There are trees down. There's a lot of damage. This is just going to be a big recovery for everybody all around the area and you know we've saw it firsthand and just a really unfortunate situation but I'm going to send it back to you Rebecca. And thank you Symphony I mean yeah you can just hear unfortunately what it was like for people here that we are you know if you didn't get into the most intense part of the thunderstorm and I had been mentioning it was like a hurricane she said it was like you're on the TV in Florida seriously it's that kind of extensive you know damage and widespread strong prolonged winds and it, it just lasted so long in the Cedar Rapids area. Um, so luckily we do have things winding down. Severe thunderstorm watch is still out. Now I, I'm guessing this is going to get scaled back here, um, but we are going to um, see some improvements here shortly. I mean, Corey, did, what, ha what fell on the roof? Uh, an, antenna the an antenna fell off the tower uh, on our roof. We heard, I mean, I heard things falling on the yeah. roof. Two air conditioners that are off. Two air conditioners that are off. One in the yard. I saw the satellite. What's that all like? Both, all of our steerable satellite feeds are down. All the satellite feeds are down. So the road coming into the station is blocked, so no one can come in and out. Just in case you were wondering, anyone <laughs> listening from home that needs to come into work. Uh, Nick can. said he's stuck on Highway 30 in gridlock. Um, so uh, Nick Stewart. So, um, you know, we got we are going to be experiencing a lot of this a lot of issues as we go through this afternoon the good news is it's 2 p.m uh if there's any if there's any good news most of the time right around maybe 4 p.m is when most of this stuff is starting yeah. and this is this was an early event uh and i'm gonna just show you what i was seeing this morning because it has been um quite interesting but i am at work 
uh, in the early morning hours and there was a little area of thunderstorms. If I can get out that far, little area of thunderstorms back here. This is 6 a.m. This is what originated right here. This is what turned into what just came through. Came into Sioux City, you could see the shelf cloud started to intensify. The lightning picked up. Here's 8, 9 a.m. And at this point, we started to get an idea. We have sunshine. We have a lot of moisture and instability, and the winds were just ripping in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And that, was tra that translated to this intense Boeing segment of thunderstorms that has quickly moved across the state in just a matter of hours and has left a lot of destruction in its path. And you can just see that intense Boeing line there. And now that has started to wind down and move to the east. So most of Eastern Iowa here, we're, we're, we're doing pretty good uh, now in terms of the weather currently, in terms of the, the pickup that has to happen, that's gonna take a while. Unfortunately, hearing about a lot of damage um, and damage in crop damage and things that we don't wanna hear about and we definitely don't wanna see this time of year. And we are going to be assessing that and we are going to have crews all across Eastern Iowa to give you that information. Um, I think that we can go back to regular programming right now. Uh, we are going to get some more updates on Facebook and Twitter. If you have lost power and you're watching us on Facebook Live or you still have power and you're interested, we'll be back at 5 p.m. Hopefully everyone's power is back by then or hopefully getting close. Um, we are going to provide updates on Facebook and Twitter and try and collect all of the damage reports and such and um, get some more information from everyone in the area. And um, we, I mean, we have reporters already across the area. I was going to check just one more thing, um, which is our, um, our chime in. And we had a tree down in Anamosa. Someone sent us a pretty big tree. So Anamosa is one of those spots that was kind of getting in on some of the pretty strong winds too. Um, that's on our, our weather scan do if we want to go to that really quickly. But otherwise, um, we are going to just kind of collect some information about everything. Uh, we obviously are just seeing the damage here. We obviously can't leave Broadcast Park at the moment, um, but Symphony has uh, just a look at what's been going on right outside the station. Uh, Symphony, tell, tell me what's going on right there. Well, Rebecca, I'm about 12 feet where I was just live talking to some other people with trees down, and here is a huge roadblock on this tree. I'm standing in the middle of it, and just take a look at this. This giant tree has fallen over, it has literally busted the window of this car. There's damage to the house, not that much damage to the house, but there is damage to that house. And this is just a huge tree. I'm literally just standing in the middle of it. I'm standing by rubble in between it. There's panels from the roof. It is just an insane sight out here. And unfortunately, this is how the entire street in front of Broadcast Park looks like it's bad. In front of our station, it looks bad. It's just, like I've said, it's devastating out here. There's a lot of damage. It's going to be a lot of cleanup. It's going to take a lot of time. And, you know, the people you just heard me talk to, they were shocked. They said they lived here their whole lives. They've never heard anything like this. I was in the station. I was shocked. I was scared. You know, it was loud. Things were rumbling. The windows were shaking. It's just a crazy situation to have winds this high, you know, right outside of our station, too. So we felt it, and we're just seeing all the devastation just right outside our doors. It is just an awful sight out here, Rebecca, and I'm going to throw it back to you. Yeah, I mean, we were in here, we were all in this building, we were in this room where um, we, this isn't a shelter. We, we have a designated shelter in the building and we, we did have to leave. And I'm sure a lot of people were taking shelter once you realized how bad and intense it was for a long period of time. And there's probably a lot of roads that look like that. So venturing out is not gonna be a good idea right now. There may be people at home, I'm at work, I've been here since a long hours. time, <laughs> 12 hours almost. Um, and, um, the roads blocked but you know we are going to have to clean these things up the power lines the transformers that are blown it's going to take a while especially with these large trees that are downed the city is going to get out and do what they can and we want to leave the emergency lines open for uh, life-threatening emergencies so the police and the first responders can get out to those areas they know that there's storm damage they're working on it the energy companies are working on it and we're going to get things fixed up here but it's going to take a while we had a very, very intense storm. You do not hear about 100 mile an hour winds like this very often, uh, especially here with uh, straight line wind damage like we have seen. So 
We are going to continue to gather some information about what's gone on around the area. We're gonna get you some more reports, some more pictures, some more videos, and we are going to be back at 5 p.m. with more coverage on this, of course, and um, we are going to talk about at least some calmer weather for tomorrow. So we needed some rain, we got some rain, we got a little too much along with it with the thunderstorms, um, but I mean, you likely went through a historic event in parts of eastern Iowa here. This is not something that you hear about every day with 100 mile an hour winds, especially going through a metro area. So we are going to collect all the storm damage. We are going to do our best to get to get you everything that we know and let you know about cleanup and likely having to pick up debris around the Cedar Rapids area and a lot of eastern Iowa. And we are going to continue to have updates on Facebook and Twitter, on our Instagram, on our apps. You can just search Iowa's News now. You'll find it all. So we'll be back here here on CBS 2 at 5 p.m. with the latest in news and weather. And until then, stay safe. Get weather warn alerts on all your devices. Stay ahead of the storm with Iowa's News Now Weather First.